Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the movie part of our series, What If Deku Was a Secret Hero? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Han Baron from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. No POV. Things have taken an odd turn Izuku thought while grunting after being thrown into the back of a van with a girl. I am, you, okay, Izuku said to the girl. Her name was Shuranui I am, a fellow quirkless Izuku happened to meet a few months after he turned 13. After being diagnosed, few wanted to play or even associate with him due to his condition, let alone the fact that his once friend, Bakugo Katsuki, had turned into his worst tormentor. That was until he met Ayim one day, helping her after some of her bullies had knocked her books and bag away. She was a girl around his age with brown hair and blue eyes on her cute face. She was a bit taller than him, but the thing that stood out the most was the very large breast she had for a girl her age. But that wasn't what Izuku had worried about when he met her. He had just enjoyed having a friend again. Now though, it seemed as if there was something against them. The two of them were captured by a group of villains while walking back from school. It took a little over an hour to reach reach the likely hideout, the two were pushed out. Come on, move it you worthless dregs. I can't believe we're still worrying about wastes like you. A female villain with long arms said. No, no, they're merchandise. The boy isn't too valuable. But I can think of many who would enjoy the girl. The bestial leader of the group said, feeling up Ayam's chest while she couldn't stop him. Her eyes filled with tears while Izuku's were filled with rage. Behind them a short quiet villain was on a call with their crew. What? Just one. Well what are you worried about? There should be more than enough of you to deal with him. Let's get these two with the others and call it a day, he said with a roll of his eyes. As the two teens were pulled away from one another, Izuku felt something strange building up within himself. Especially as the beast-like villain decided to sample some of Ayam's assets. His blood was boiling until it finally went over and awakened something within him. Hey, let's move Monger A.L., the long-armed woman said until Izuku struck a nerve point in her hand, causing immense pain. Before she could react, Izuku quickly impacted multiple points along her arms, until striking a handful of points on her back, causing the villain to collapse. The smaller villain tried to stop Izuku, but the boy beat him senseless as well, using enough damaging strikes to where the man couldn't use his quirk, one that let him unleash fire from his hands. Izuku turns to face the beast-like villain, but he was stopped by the fact the man had his claws at Ayim's throat. Not sure where that came from Brett, but it won't help you now. Back off or else, the villain snarls. Not that it would matter much. Izuku was coming down from what set him off earlier. As the boy took a knee to recover a gentle bit of clapping could be heard. Quite the dramatic scene you've set up here. But it won't do you a lot of good. The one clapping was a red brown haired man with a confident smirk on his face. His trench coat blew slightly around him as he walked toward the beast. Showing his pistols and the hilt of his knife. Who are you? Where are the others? The beast villain roars. Oh them? Yeah, they won't be coming. Nor will they be able to hurt anyone anytime soon. Much like you, they weren't much of a challenge, the man says with a smirk directed at his foe. The villain though is confused and asks, how is that possible? We had over 30 people on standby here. Are you saying you took them all out? The man gives his a somewhat bored look before saying, I thought that was implied. The way the man said that and the calm way he carried himself started to set the villain off more. So, he tossed Ayim to the side and charged at the man, who quickly drew his right gun and shot all around him, not aiming at the villain directly. This wasn't to startle or throw the villain off. The gunman hit right where he was aiming for, that being surfaces that would perfectly bounce the bullets into specific nerve clusters and points to stop the beast from moving. How did you? I can't move. The villain roared as the man stepped over and pushed him over a bit. And you won't for a while. Not only did I hit some major nerves, but those bullets were laced with a paralytic agent. Now, where are the others you've kidnapped? The man asked while pulling a sawed-off shotgun from a pocket of his coat. The villain insults the man and quickly loses three of his toes to the shotgun. See now that's not helpful. This goes much easier if you work with me. All his foe snarls out is go to hell. And that rewards him with a shotgun shell through his kneecap. Izuku and Ayim were shocked by what they had seen so far. But the shouts from the villain didn't compare to what came next. After calling everyone who was quirkless a waste of space that is no better than cattle or a lab rat the man drew his other revolver. And shot the villain through one of his testicles. Oh, quit whining you pathetic monster. You've still got the other one. But that can be remedied in no time. So, where are the others? The man says while pointing his gun at the villain's crotch, slowly counting down from ten with a disgusted look on his face, said villain finally willing to talk after the man skipped from eight to one, directing him to the captives held underground. There was that so hard, the gunman asks before flipping his weapon around and bashing the villain's face in a bit with the grip. Once that was done, he addressed Izuku and I am. So, you did this? He asked with a look at the injured villains. Izuku gulped and acknowledged that fact. Huh, not bad. My name's William Walker Earp. Good use of pressure points and other attacks if the damage is accurate to what I'm seeing, he said while looking over the two villains that Izuku disabled. Yeah, I uh, I don't know how or why it happened. 
Izuku responded. He only noted that he felt a burning rage as they were taking Ayam away, and then something boiled up inside of me to make me act. The girl in question blushed at that while uttering a quiet thank you. William hummed and seemed to be contemplating a few things before addressing the pair. Well, you two should come with me. I might need you, Earp said while directing the teens behind him. Neither of them have a clue what he meant and asked if he was a hero. Now why would I be one of those wastes of energy? I'm something older. I'm an armed detective. Or as you call them in Japan, a beauty. He noted that the profession was an old one, dating back to long before quirks were ever imagined. As they passed by a number of his victims from breaking in initially. Wait imagined. What do you mean? They're natural, aren't they? I am asked in confusion while adjusting her glasses. They most certainly are not. They're a result of some of the evilest entities in history. A group dedicated to what they see as the pushing of the limits of human evolution. Ayu, Earp explained as they went down into the basement of the warehouse. This caused the students to stop cold, both trying to process what the man had just told them until they were called to keep up. On the way down, he noted that they used the little remains of one of their most evil members to make the base culture that would create quirks. It was taken from an ancient evil, a monster, a demon in some circles. At the time he was finally killed he was known as Vlad the Bad. But he has multiple more unsettling names. Vlad Teeps, Vlad Dracul, or the most famous of them, Dracula. The teens were stunned and Izuku asked if he was serious. Yep, Vlad kept himself alive for centuries by consuming human blood and body parts. He evolved himself to be near impervious and ageless after so long. And he only ever saw value in people so long as their genes offered potential. Sound familiar? It's almost the exact same mentality as anyone who has a quirk. Is that due to his influence? Izuku quietly asked as they reached a locked section of the basement. Yep, everyone who has a quirk, well I guess there's one exception, but most everyone who has a quirk has the same kind of evil brewing in them. They just may not realize or understand it. Izuku wanted to oppose those thoughts, but his memories flashed to everyone with a quirk who had let him down. Even his mother had told him that she wished things could be different. But, that doesn't explain what I could do. What was that? He asked while Erp was inspecting the strange lock to the prisoners. Crap, looks like, tripwires and similar lined into this keypad. No way I can break this, but, maybe I don't have to. The man hummed for a moment, both in contemplation and in the best way to illustrate what he suspected about Izuku. Well, at least we've got a girl here who can probably get you going, kid. His comment confuses and scandalizes the pair as they ask again what he's talking about. Okay, Missy, I need you to trust me. First, unbutton your top a bit, Herp says with a relaxed look. The girl turns bright red and Izuku asks what he was getting at. It'll make sense soon. Trust me, Iam's blush doesn't fade but she does as asked, and then holds her arms to the side as well. Good. Okay, kid. Come over here. Erp says with a gesture of his fingers. Izuku is still confused but does as the man says, and is then pushed right into Ayam's chest face first. The girl's first reaction involves her bringing her arms close across her chest, and thus burying Izuku's face deeper into her cleavage. Izuku meanwhile feels the boiling pressure build in him again until it releases. Ayam lets go and falls backwards, but is then caught by a sharp-eyed Izuku. He gives her a smoldering smile and says, thanks for treat, but let's make sure you won't get too messy. Aju-chan. His phrasing and the way he was holding her almost sent Ayam over the edge again. But she held it together long enough to let Izuku help her up and escort her to a safe distance. Not exactly a subtle way to get it done, don't you think? Izuku says to Erp, realizing what it was that he was hoping to do with the lucky pervert incident. Hey it worked. Hysteria mode won't trigger unless you're excited enough. Now about this door, Erp says with a shrug before gesturing to the keypad. Izuku hums upon hearing the term hysteria mode but sets it aside to break the passcode on the lock. Now I get some of it. I'm not 100% on how this works, but I can see the way these wires cross and feed into different traps and the like. He couldn't crack it without help, but I think I can. The young man smiles a bit more before asking if Erp had tools to cut the wires and adjust the sections within the housing. Right here. You can keep them after kid. I'll get a new set, Erp says with a smirk of his own. Izuku's brain works so fast he can perceive the workings and wiring, bypassing all of the traps that would have killed the people inside or those outside if it was opened improperly. Once it was done, a few screamed or cried out before William stepped up. It's all right everyone, I'm an armed detective, I'm here to get all of you out, though not without some help. He winked to Izuku and I am before they got to work on the locks of the cages within. After rescuing the dozens of captive quirkless, Izuku could finally ask more questions about what was going on, and what hysteria mode was. I don't know absolutely everything, but I do know some details. When you mentioned jealousy and anger at I am being taken, it got me suspicious. What you activated was Hysteria Berserk. It's a more reckless form, but useful as you found out. Erp continued by noting that it was a neurogenic inherited condition. One that has existed for almost a millennia. You're likely a descendant of the Toyama clan, and they've had this ability since the Edo period. This shocks the teens when they hear that. And then they blushed brightly when the Bute noted that it went active when a user was sexually aroused. So, that's why you pushed me into I am's breasts. Izuku said with his face looking like a tomato. Erp shrugged before moving on to a different set of questions. So, what do you want to do now? 
The question was for the both of them as he felt they could do more than most expected. William looked to I aim was descended from an impressive line of true shinobi. Not like that stupid joke Ed shot. Real ninjas, Derp said with a roll of his eyes. The girl was stunned by this and asked who some of them were. But she was very embarrassed when the man showed him a few images of her ancestor. One she apparently inherited her chest from. Yeah you might get pulled into odd sections of research because of that. But it could be good for you. Both of the teens were confused and asked what he meant. If you want, I can put in a witness protection program. Or you can come with me, to Butte High. Though I guess it'd be more like a middle school you transfer to. Erp said. He noted that he was also a teacher at the school. Noting that he was the instructor of the assault section of the school. And even if they didn't want to follow that, there were plenty of paths that a Butte could follow. For example, you know how I went about interrogating that asshole. Yeah, that's actually gentle compared to an actual Dagula expert. I'm only a rank B in that. You want brutality? They can't mess with minds and extract info in a lot of ways. Erp said with a slightly cruel chuckle. He then pulled back and explained the Logi Transport Division, Inquesta Investigation, and the Medica Response Division. Whatever you choose is up to you. That is, if you really want to follow this path. Izuku looked down while thinking about the power that he now had. Embarrassing as it is, I could do like I did today. Save a lot of people. Even without that. At least, if he's teaching me. So he stepped forward and said he'd like to learn. I am though looked nervous at the thought of learning to fight. And basically, being used as a tool to get Izuku into a special state. It doesn't have to be that way. If you follow this, you can learn all sorts of ways to fight back. And yes, you were thinking aloud, Erp said with a smile. Not the confident or challenging smirk he'd had on most of the time they had known the man. This was a look that seemed to convey concern and a bit of compassion. This life isn't for everyone. But it could be the best chance you have at doing more than just existing. Like most would say is your only role. Wouldn't you like the chance to show them how wrong they are? The girl looked down at her chest again, thinking about what many had said behind her back. How she would only get a person because of her chest and nothing else. That all she was good for was to be a tool to get others excited or that they wished she had a quirk so it would be worth getting closer to her. I'm not so sure he won't have me learn or have me taught things that fit more into the former. But, if he's right about my ancestor being a fighter, maybe I can learn and he can help me even more. Besides, Izuku is willing. And he's one of the first real friends I've had. Aim lets out a nervous breath before saying, Okay, I'm at least willing to see what this is all about. When do we start? William nods before saying they'd work on that later, noting that they'd need basic training before he could really get started with them. This is going to be interesting. No POV. A day after Izuku and the others had been rescued, and Ko and Asashi Midoriya were keeping their son close to them, following him in from school after the incident. While some had tried to claim he'd just run away due to his condition, more of the police and a number of heroes believed the truth. And, I can't believe we missed that. And not just once, but enough to where there were almost 100 captive quirkless. What's wrong with us? Death Arms said in frustration while watching the news coverage of the story. Kamui Woods looked down in equal shame and said, It's the fault that we're too used to being on the lookout for flashy villains or crimes that are more obvious. We failed because we assumed that was how most would act. Mount Lady was equally saddened by what happened and hoped those who had been hurt or taken were moved somewhere safe. It's not like it's their fault for their luck in life. They don't deserve this, she said with a shake of her head. At Aldera though, things still weren't great. A few joked that it would be the only time Izuku would be on the news. Others made comments about that the quirkless should be sent away. Some felt sympathy for him and the others though. That Hugo was a bit odd. He had been worried when he heard about the incident, not that he'd admit it. But at the same time he thought Izuku shouldn't be there anymore. Not just to stay out of his way, but because it would keep him safer than being there. You got real lucky a hero showed up Deku. They could actually do something. Unlike the useless you, he said in a backhanded bit of worry. Izuku looked at him funny before saying, it wasn't a hero who showed up. Erp San is a beauty. His classmates looked at him funny before saying that was impossible and not what the news had said. Before Izuku could defend his point, someone new spoke up. Save your breath, kid. These worthless pieces of shit are too stupid to know any better. And it'll only get worse as time goes by. Stupidity is hereditary in their case. Izuku turns and sees William Erp standing in the doorway. The same confident smirk on his face. The students look at him in anger and annoyance before asking how he wasn't a hero. Erp smirked before noting he didn't have something useless as a quirk. Then how did you beat all of those goons? They reported that over 30 villain had been taken out. How did you take them down? That Hugo demanded to know. The gunman smirked and noted that he fought like a human. Not a dumb animal. Like a person with a quirk. This enraged Bakugo and most of the kids. To the point the explosive teen blasted at Erp. Who smirked before intercepting the brat's right swing by catching his hand and pushing a pressure point. Shutting down the boy's quirk. He nor the others could understand what is going on and before he could react, Erp decided to teach the brat a lesson. By breaking most of his fingers and then hand when he tried to lash out again. Evading back from the explosions easily, and then crushing both of Bakugo's hands with the grips of his pistols. William then Sparta kicked him in the stomach to where he impacted and was sitting with his head hanging out of the open window. Oh I think you deserve a bit more than that, the man said with a smirk, tossing a small pen knife at the top of the window. 
causing it to fall and trap the brat in place. Uh, was that necessary? Izuku said in a bit of fear at what had happened. Probably not, but it was deserved. Come on, I've got some of your transfer stuff set up. William said while setting a hand on Izuku's shoulder, who looked over his shoulder as Bakugo was kicking and struggling to get out of the position he was stuck in. Once outside of the school, Izuku was met by not just his parents but Aim and who he assumed were her parents as well. The woman had her same hair color but was wearing a kimono with a somewhat confident air. Her father meanwhile seemed a bit more reserved and uneasy about the matters involved. Before any other questions could be asked, a limo drove up and Erp opened the door. After you ladies and gentlemen, he said with a slight flourish. The adults went first with both fathers ready to attack Erp if necessary. Once inside, they were brought up to speed on a few things. Though not without Erp getting into a bit of the minibar within the vehicle. So yeah, I'd like to have both of them learn how to become bure at the school I teach. I think it could do both of them a lot of good. Any chance you could pass a bottle of that this way sir? I think I need a strong drink. Aim's father said while trying to wrap his head around what he had been told. Her mother blushed though before admitting she had known about her family history and stories. But, I thought it was just that. History and stories. Do you really think my daughter could be able to do some of what our ancestors could? Erp shrugged and noted it was possible. But she needs to be trained. Izuku on the other hand could use help refining his own skills in hysteria mode. Before he could continue, Hisashi asked a question that was a bit embarrassing. How does hysteria mode or whatever affect women? Uh, from what little I know, I think it makes them seem more defenseless and charming to men. It takes them off guard and leaves them open. Inko and Hisashi blushed brightly at that before the latter admitted that Inko had shown similar attitudes in the bedroom. Didn't need to know that. Izuku muttered out. Willem had a big laugh at the interaction and said it wouldn't be surprising. The condition is inherited, can't be changed that way. But that does make it somewhat easier to track. Anyway, I know they said they want in. But I thought all should be brought up to speed on what is going on. Before I take them, or before you step in to stop me. The parents all shared looks before asking their children if this was what they really wanted. This power, these skills, they were a part of our family mom. I have a chance to do more and save lives this way. I need to take it. Izuku said with a little hitch in his voice. I'm not as resolved as Izuku, but I want to do more than what most have said I can. And I want the chance to know more about our past. And I don't want to leave him either. I am said while blushing. Herp smiled before saying, guess you may have your Watts in there kid. Well maybe anyway. Hard to say for certain. Everyone looked at him funny but before they could ask, the man brought forward the paperwork to finish the transfers of Izuku and I aim to New Butte Middle and High School. It would take a few more days, but soon Izuku had the maroon bulletproof blazer and gray slacks of a Butte, while I am was given a red sailor uniform that was equally bulletproof. You sure you're ready for this Izuku? Inko asked once more. Yeah, time to reconnect with the Toyama skills, Izuku said with a slightly nervous smile. Inko hugged her son before walking down to meet with William, who was waiting with a car to pick up him and I am up the latter of whom surprised the pair when they found the Shuranui house. So, she's apparently rich, Herp said while looking at the large complex that was given as her home address. Sorry, Aya, uh, what's wrong? I am said while adjusting the creases of her uniform. Izuku just gaped like a fish while Herp groaned and said it was nothing. Hope you kids are ready, because the life of a beauty isn't easy, he said while shaking his head in disbelief. It took about an hour of driving to reach the rough area in the hills where the school was, and William had to leave the car behind and make sure they weren't followed. Why all the secrecy and paranoia? I am asked as the group made their way through the woods. Herp stopped for a moment before sighing. There's a reason it's new Butte High. The old one was destroyed. Almost 80 years ago the MLA with the Stroll leading decided to remove us. As they saw our abilities and skills as an insult in opposition to the new world order they wanted. You'll learn more later. The two teens were nervous about that and wondered if they really would be safe in this new school. There's a reason we have so many redundancies. We're almost there. Keep up, the gunman said while walking towards a set of misty hills. I am still seemed nervous, but Izuku took her hand and followed the man. As the fog seemed to get thicker, both wondered what and why this was happening. But after ten minutes of walking, they were surprised to be met with sunny skies, and an impressive complex of buildings hidden by the fog. Handy trick, hey, come on, let's get you to the principal and then your dorms, Erp said while leaning against a tree. Once inside they met the current head of the school. So, this kid is a descendant of the Toyamas, and the girl is a Shuranui. The old, but skilled head of the school said. The man's name was Muto Seidu. He narrowed his eyes at both before asking if the Shuranui girl was a ninja or a detective. Pretty sure the former. The other branch didn't have members that could have the capabilities of their ancestor. But we need to help her reconnect with hers, William said with a shrug. The principal nodded before accepting the transfer paperwork and handing the children keys to their dorm rooms. I hope you two are ready. You've got quite a bit of catching up to do, and Colt doesn't hold back. Izuku and Aim were confused by that but thanked the principal anyway. After getting to the impressive-sized dorms, both students thanked William for the chance to grow and learn. That's a good mentality, and it works well with the Beauty articles. What are those? Some sort of creed, Aim asked before heading to the building. 
Herp smiled and said the articles are the guidelines for every one of us. There's a couple of special ones. Despite my actions, American and Japanese license holders aren't actually allowed to kill. You can if you get it from England though. He said that they'd get the full details in Colt the next day, provided you survive. Good luck, William said before turning his back to the pair. Izuku and I am shared a scared look before planning to get a decent night's sleep. Hey Izuku, thanks for being here, I am said before going to her room. Izuku smiled and said, I'm really glad you came I am. It wouldn't be the same without you. The girl blushed before ducking her head and hugging Izuku with a peck on his cheek to thank him again. Izuku's eye twitched as he felt his arousal rise again. Not really the time for hysteria mode, he thinks before hurrying to his room. The next day and for over six months after though, the two teens were put through hell. The basic training course of Colt was meant to make sure all students were prepared for all the dangers they could face, even those that wouldn't be a problem until they were full detectives. At one point Izuku was throwing up from the amount of running he was forced to do, and even then, they wouldn't let up, using many guns to make sure the students kept up. I know we have bulletproof gear, but this is insane. He groaned while resting with Iam. The girl was in no different of a position, only she also had to endure some of the dangers that a female beauty would endure, some of which were worse than others. She had a blue shade over her eyes while resting with Izuku. I'd maybe agree with you if this was about 100 years ago, but the rules have changed, and we need to adapt to be sure you won't get killed. We've lost a lot as is, Erp said while checking in on his chosen students. He pulled out a hip flask and seemed ready to take a drink, only for the man's hand and arm to start shaking as he was bringing it up. Sensei, what's going on? Izuku asked after noticing that William had stopped. It's nothing. Nothing you need to worry about. So hey, pop quiz time. What are the majors each student can follow in the curriculum? I am looked at him funny but played along and listed off what she knew. Aside from the insane cult training and basic classes, there's your assault course, which specializes in hand-to-hand, -hand, firearms, and other forms of combat, as well as the subset of snipe, which focuses on extreme range combat. Then there is lezed. They focus on intel gathering and analysis, with the Dagula sub-department being the interrogation specialists. Um, just curious sensei. But I've heard rumors that Dagula's methods include torture, and they can ignore Article 9. The no-killing rule. Is that true? Izuku asked with a scared look to his mentor. Herp had on a small smile before saying, Uh, uh, uh. I'm the one who asked questions. Continue. Both could tell he was dodging the matter but chose not to follow it further for the time being. I and continued by noting that Connect and Informa were similar to the Lezard course. But their specialty is in planning, processing, and organizing. I am said before Izuku took the next one. That being the inquest department, one that was geared towards investigation and reasoning, though they don't see much action, normally focused on say missing persons or similar small cases, with rapier being the forensic analysis branch. They are considered something of a glue that keeps the others together as most departments ask them for extra help. I am then noted that the Logi department was transport and logistics division of the curriculum. Logi itself is about using the various vehicles we may use, from planes to ships and cars. Then there's Ando, who maintain all of the weapons and gear Bude use, like your guns, though I've heard those are a special set you made yourself. Not a question so I guess I can answer that thought. Yes, I made my two hand cannons myself, the king of hearts here on my right, and the queen of clubs on my left, and my knife I call he jack of diamonds. William bragged a bit before gesturing to finish the descriptions. Izuku cleared his throat while looking at the guns themselves considering what weapons he wanted to use someday. A medica is next. Medica itself are like first responder types in combat medics. The um, ambulance department though are the severe trauma experts and surgeons. I've heard a rumor that we actually are supported by them because a number of the best doctors were trained by this school. Is that right? Erp gave him a look as if to reiterate his point from earlier, before gesturing to I aim to finish the courses. Right uh, the last one is the research department. They focus on the training of various individuals. SSR focuses on supernaturally powered people. I know you've suggested me for that course to better understand the skills of my ancestors. But I don't want to do it. Is that because you don't want to do anything with the other half? Which is what? William said with a pointed look at Iam, who blushed and looked away. Izuku though didn't know the other branch and asked Iam what made that section special. But she refused to say anything. So Erp ripped the bandage off. It's known as CVR. Originally the specialty was honey traps and the like training attractive young female Bude in charm and seduction. It is one of the things that Bude often fall victim to, though it has grown from where it used to be. Erp noted that it had been expanded to include the training of attractive men as well, noting that plenty of women were powerful and could have access to information they need, as well as those men and women who preferred the same sex. I work with SSR from time to time, and I was trained by them, but I've never dealt with CVR much. The two look at him funny and ask what he meant by him being trained by SSR. Nothing you need to worry about. At least not yet. On the other hand you've got a different problem. The man gestured toward the main groundskeeping area, where a group of dogs had been released and were now charging in their direction. Izuku and I am screamed before taking off in different directions. Keep it up you too, Herp said before pulling out his flask again, 
only for his arm to start twitching and seizing up once more. Damn, I really wish I didn't have to worry about this. Guess it's about time, William said while taking the flask from his right and noticing how his fingers were shaking. At the end of six months, Izuku and Aim were certain they had died over a dozen times due to madness of their instructors. Both were caked in sweat, dirt, and a few bruises when William arrived again. Congrats, you made it through basic training. Now is when things get hard, he said with a chuckle. Aim started crying while Izuku groaned. The man and other instructors had a laugh at Izuku and the other rookies to become Bute. Though we really put you two through extra since you joined late into the year, the attractive, but trigger-happy instructor at Hagen Mela said while twirling her twin SMGS. She had tan skin and a confident gleam in her green eyes, but she also had a bit of a temper. You sure you should be joking about being behind a hog on? Herb said with a smirk directed his colleague's way, who blushed before unloading at the man. Then William in turn dodged or deflected the bullets with his knife. Muto then clapped and told the students to take the next week off. As Erp Sensei said, your real training begins now that the basics are done. I hope you are all prepared. The students groaned before starting to get up or be helped up by their friends. Before the teachers dismissed though, one caught William. I really do wish you would come for treatments more often, the nun habit wearing Romano Sana said. The man sighed before saying he had more important things to deal with and work on. This didn't go unnoticed by some though, namely Izuku who saw the two talking as they were walking away. Treatments for what? Perhaps I'll get a bit of inquested training early. Izuku thinks while helping Aim walk out of the training grounds. Now POV, as Izuku was turning 14 years old, he had begun more specialized training with Bude High, the lead of which was Erp's assault classes that he made all of the students go though. He currently had them in a maze-like area for a special set of tests he wanted to put them through before they could go to their other classes later in the day. Even if you kids do go into other disciplines, it never hurts to have a strong base in combat skills and tactics. So, as he was saying this in the training ground, the gunman opened the chamber of his guns and loaded them. I'd start running now, he said with a smile while pointing his pistols at the students. Most of the students had basic 9mm guns and knives to arm themselves, as it was a standard part of their uniform that they always need a gun and a blade on school grounds. But that wasn't doing any of them much good against Erp. Not for lack of trying. After a few days of dodging the man, some were fed up and tried to take him out themselves. You sadistic psycho, we're taking you down. Some shouted as they took aim and fired on their instructor, who rolled his eyes while ducking down. Most of the bullets clashed above him or accidentally hit those who had allied to take him out. Good attempt, but you guys need to think about how you'll attack. Not just go in guns blazing. Still, he showed guts, Erp said before telling them they didn't have to participate in training anymore. Izuku was wide-eyed hearing this but quickly put together what the reasoning could be. He wants us to fight back, even if it's impossible. Though I wonder what the best way to handle them would be. Izuku thought aloud while Aim dodged by running along some barriers. While the green teen had taken the time to improve his baseline shooting skills, he'd also been taking some inquesta classes. Aim though had started to learn the basics of ninjutsu from a descendant of the Fuga clan. While my family were experts in subterfuge, sabotage, and poison, the Shuranui clan were experts in assassination, battlefield disruption, and seduction. The one who had been explaining this to her was Fuga Koten, a smaller man but nonetheless skilled. He had a habit of blending into the shadows so well, no one ever knew he was there. Even with his neon green hair, with a few experienced beauty as an exception, he had taken to instructing Aim on the basics of ninjutsu within the SSR department. You have to figure out how to link to the rest of your family's techniques on your own. I cannot help you in that matter, he said in a stern tone. The girl grumbled thinking about what the man had said while they were dodging bullets from Erp. We won't be winning like this, but maybe there's a way to turn the tide. Izuku thought aloud, until his thought were disrupted by Aim missing her step and falling right towards him. Both shouted until Izuku got his face buried in Aim's large chest, and that sent both of them over the edge. Aim screaming and blushing while backing up, and Izuku rapidly entering hysteria mode. As the girl was backing up, she put herself right in line of sight with Erp, who smirked while aiming his gun at her. As the bullet was being fired, Izuku saw it happening in slow motion rapidly drawing his pistol and shooting the bullets out of the air. William's eyes were wide at that and his smirk grew bigger. Well now, things are about to get interesting. He aimed in Iam's direction again, but Izuku moved quickly and scooped her up in a bridal carry. This made the young Kanoichi's face go scarlet, but she didn't mind the feeling or rescue, especially while looking up at Izuku's sharp face while in hysteria mode. Once they were a decent distance away, Izuku stopped and advised the girl to stay out of harm's way. We don't need you getting messy in this, Izuku said with a wink. And while she was tempted to do as he asked, she grabbed his hand before he left. I'm, I'm not running from this. If you plan to fight, I'll fight with you. Izuku's eyes widened slightly before closing them. He turned back to Aim and put his other hand atop hers. If you truly wish that, then I will keep you safe as best I can. While we try to stop our teacher, the boy's smiling face making Aim blush again. She nodded before asking if he had an idea. With hysteria mode active, Izuku could put together a perfect plan to try and stop Erp who currently had knocked out a few more of the students with bullet and fist in the training area. Come on, 
You kids can do better than this. Perhaps you don't have enough of a challenger sensei, Izuku said while stepping from behind a wall. His eyes narrowed while smirking at William and gently moved toward his handgun in the holster. The man immediately knew what was going on with Izuku and fired as fast as he could at the boy. But Izuku was just as fast and shot the bullets that would do the most damage out of the air before charging his teacher. Herp cursed as he was out of ammo currently and Izuku was shooting at him. He rolled to the side and tried to reload his pistols. I am though wasn't making it easy for him as she dropped some small explosives and smoke bombs from above. Herp grit his teeth before seeing Izuku taking aim with his gun. Herp dropped his guns and quickly drew his very large knife, the Jack of Diamonds, with his right hand. The blade seemed to have a blood red wave along the steel and edge as he drew it, and then deflected or cut the bullets Izuku shot at him. I need to be in hysteria mode to do that. He can do it with just skill alone, but it still leaves him open. Izuku think before dropping his pistol and pulling his own blade out to at least distract the instructor, and in the moment he moved fast enough to catch Herp's hand and point his blade at the man, who was surprised but recovered by saying, don't think you've won just because you stopped my main hand. Hayam then appeared and had a blade at his back before saying, We know. That's why we made sure you can't back away. William looked back at the girl slightly before eyeing up Izuku. He smiled before saying, Well done on getting me to check. But I haven't exactly fallen yet. Izuku smirks at the man and notes that this was a clear checkmate scenario. Oh really? Then I guess you accounted for this too. Herp says before slightly opening his coat with his left hand. And showing a very long barreled pistol hidden along his side. Izuku was surprised by that but still felt it wasn't enough to change the situation before them. That was until Erp raised an eyebrow and pulled the trigger on the gun. It shot downward and opened what appeared to be a portal beneath his feet, and removing him from the situation Izuku and Ayam had put him in. Great job you two. You managed to best me for the most part and stop my offense. But you only did that with the info you had on hand. The two heard above them and then saw a fiery shot hit next to their feet, looking up to see the man sitting on a section of the maze and aiming the long pistol at them. He chuckled before telling the two they had passed and could continue with their other classes. Izuku groaned a bit before picking up his weapon and slightly coming down from hysteria mode. I am pouted a bit before following Izuku. Herp's smile persisted before thinking to himself, you really could be the newest H but that's still something of a toss-up. We'll see how well you take to your other classes. Izuku shook his head while washing up and coming out of hysteria mode. Still feels odd when it happens. And I really don't want to think about what others will say if they see that. With the test done, Izuku didn't have to keep going back unless it was for actual assault classes. So, he could focus on Inquesta and following up on something important that had been bugging him. Something he relayed to Ayam after they met up to go to their classes. Herp Sensei's skills and various abilities. It feels like he's learned from every section. You know what I mean. Izuku said while looking at his pistol and thinking about what kind of gun he wanted to use. Ayam hummed and noted, he did say he'd learned from SSR, and if that gun would anything to go off of, it makes sense. And he's also an Ando expert because of how he made those guns of his. Before they could continue to compare, the two had to split up to their preferred courses. Or at least Izuku's was. And he enjoyed the analysis and data collection work that Inquesta courses could show him. Ayam though was being pulled into the course she didn't want to do. Come on little lady. You can't hide those assets, especially if you truly are a Kanochi of the Shuranui clan. The one using this teasing was the lead teacher of the CVR course, Rain Corazon. She wore a business suit-like look, but it was clearly designed to draw eyes to her assets, as her shirt was open enough to see quite a bit of cleavage, and her skirt was short enough to really show off the black garter belt stockings that matched her hair. Her amethyst eyes practically sparkled upon seeing I aim in the research department again. While the girl wanted to go to the SSR to keep training, Fuga stopped her and helped Rain to take Ayam into the CVR section. Thank you for the help, Kokun. Perhaps I could give you a reward later, she said while pulling at her shirt a bit. The man raised his eyebrow and refused before walking away. Though not fast enough as Ayam noticed the man went scarlet. She tried to sneak away, but Corazon caught her and quickly pulled the girl into a section to change the girl's clothes multiple times, starting with a school uniform look that was more revealing then a number of fetish-focused looks, and finishing by putting the girl into the same kind of outfit her ancestor would have worn in combat, hers being purple to the historic red color. No, I don't want to wear any of this, I am said while ducking into the corner of the changing room. Rame sighed before putting a gentle hand on her shoulder. You hate the idea of just being seen as a sex object or similar, because plenty of people had told you that was your only worth, and now that you're here, you wanted the ability to deny or reject that through skill alone. I am sniffled while looking up at the woman. She had a sympathetic gaze before wrapping the girl in a hug. Believe me I know how that feels. I was told the same as quirks became more common. But there will always be those who look at you for just you. I know you already have that. The seduction teacher gently patted Ayam's head while pressing the girl into her breasts. At first, she was certain that this was just another technique to appeal to men or women. But she started to feel herself melting into the embrace of the teacher. There is strength in turning that against those who put you down though. If you could use your seductive appearance to trick a villain into revealing more or take them off guard so you can finish them. That is an even greater way of proving them wrong. 
Ayim's eyes still had some tears, but she looked to Corazon with some hope and admiration, rubbing her eyes before asking if they could take the appearance aspect slower. I'm a, uh, I'm really not ready for that. Rame agreed but also wanted to work on charming Izuku more. Hysteria mode needs a trigger after all, and thus, Ayim slightly regretted agreeing. But it would work for her and him as Ayim found when she met up with Izuku. The boy had gotten top marks during his inquest to class and on a pop quiz the instructor tossed their way. So, he took the moment to follow up on what he had been suspicious of, checking online and in the library for what he might be thinking of. Uh, need some help. I am asked while walking up to Izuku, who turned to see her in a school uniform that seemed to push up Iam's breasts as well as showing a lot of her cleavage. Her skirt was also shorter, and she was wearing long stockings underneath. Izuku dropped the pencil he had been using to take notes upon seeing her, especially because she no longer had her glasses and her hair framed her face more. His blushed bright red before turning away and saying a quiet thank you. I'm uh, sure. Could you help me find the yearbooks? I am nodded gently before checking a few of the reference sections. So, what is it that you're trying to figure out? She asked after finding one or two yearbooks. Do they hide some of these for tests or what? She also thought after finding two yearbooks in different sections. There's something off about Erp Sensei. We've been here about a year and a few things have started to seem odd with him. Izuku says before listing a number of them. The first was what they noticed on their break during the cult training. How he started shaking and quickly tried to deflect what was going on. Then there was the little bit he noticed in the exchange between the nurse and Medica instructor Romano. I only caught a bit, but I saw her mention treatments. Like something's wrong with him. But the biggest one is something very subtle most would miss. It's how much respect everyone has for him. I am looked at Izuku funny before asking what he meant. The boy noting that a transfer like theirs would need more than just their abilities and family history. Herp himself seemed to garner a lot of respect from all of the teachers. And it's not just because of his arrest rate and combat skills. There's something else here, which I think I might have just found. Izuku was looking at one of the yearbooks I am had grabbed and noticed the man in the background of a few pictures. He then went to look for a few different yearbooks and compared it with the two I am had brought. And once he did, the girl saw what had been bothering him. This was Corazon Sensei's year, but Erp Sensei isn't in the class. Nor Fuma Sensei or any of the others. I'd have thought he was the same age as them. It's more than that I am. Check this out. Izuku said before opening another book and it showed Erp was again not a student. In fact, through all of the books they had found and checked, William Wyatt Earp was not a student for a span of over 20 years. And he doesn't look any different between each of these decades. He hasn't aged in all that time. I am noted while putting together what had been bugging Izuku. He hummed while noting there was more to this, and their chance would come up soon. It's been almost a year since we had that talk. And we'll have some of our chances for answers before long. I am looked at him with some worry but agreed to follow his lead. Izuku waits for a few days while keeping an eye on Earp as he was covering world history for the general classes. So, as you can see, with the Rhode Island New State statue, things have become quite different from how Ibute used to operate. Originally, we operated akin to heroes and police. But a number of things happened too. Shift priorities. Earp's right arm started shaking a bit as he was writing on the chalkboard. He then gripped his hand and then shoulder before having to lean on the blackboard. Uh, read chapters 6 and 7. We'll review the details later this week for the test. If you'll excuse me. The green teen's eyes narrowed at this and waited a few seconds for the teacher to leave, signaling I aim to follow him. She gulped before slipping behind him. We're really doing this. When he's clearly not feeling well, it's the best time to confront him. He can't avoid it if we have obvious evidence, and he can't dodge the question. Izuku says while sticking to the walls and corners while tailing their teacher. The man initially stopped at a restroom to wash his face and gather himself. But it was also where he could vent a bit by punching the mirror in frustration. Damn, I wish there was a better way to deal with this, he thought before readying to meet with Romano. Izuku started forward to see if something else was happening when Erp started to leave the restroom. Izuku cursed in his mind at the thought of being caught. But then Ayan quickly appeared and hid the two in a locker, pressing herself up close to him while they waited for Erp to leave. He pulled out his phone and called the Medica instructor and asked her to meet at the usual section. Izuku narrowed his eyes at this and asked if Ayan had a good way to get out of the locker. Um, yeah, hang on. There we go, she said while trying to move around with her breasts restraining her in the confined space. The boy noted something very important though. She's not wearing a bra and her uniform is coming off. He thought while trying to calm down. Almost. Got it. I am announced before opening the locker. But then the two stumbled out after she unlatched the door. Izuku fell on top of her while also realizing that the button on her uniform had come undone. And he currently had a very large handful of her bare breasts in his right hand while also seeing her very pink nipples right in front of his face. Ayim was about to scream when Izuku put his left over her mouth and asked her to trust him and stay calm. Though this was also fueled by his own growing arousal slowly moving into hysteria mode. And while she didn't want to admit it, Ayim was also feeling aroused by the situation they found themselves in. Especially him covering her mouth like he was. Once she calmed down, Izuku had reached his peak and was in hysteria mode again. He gently removed his hands and carefully pulled Ayim's shirt up to cover herself. I'm guessing you didn't mean for that to happen. 
though I think it might have been a fun accident for both of us, H.M. Izuku said with a wink. The girl didn't deny it and then suddenly found herself with Izuku's blazer around her shoulders. It's not much, but it might help you feel more comfortable. Now, let's go after Herb Sensei. Izuku's words rang in aim, and she felt like she absolutely had to follow him. Taking his hand and thanking the boy, the two quickly made their way toward the Medica section and found William, who was again leaning on the wall while making his way somewhere. He was then met by Sister Romano. She caught him before saying, let's get you in there. Don't worry, I've got you. William nodded and thanked the medic while being taken to what seemed like a dead-end hallway, only for said dead-end to turn and lead somewhere else. Izuku's accelerated mind could make out what happened and found a hidden keypad. I didn't see the code though, and I'm not sure I want to make a lot of guesses, he thinks aloud upon seeing the ten-digit pad. I am hums before saying, then we just need to see what the last keys pushed were. She pulls out a compact and uses a bit of the powder to reveal the fingerprints. Izuku smiles and nods before looking at the numbers highlighted, realizing what they were after running through a number of possibilities. The year Beauty High was attacked. Few would know it after all, Izuku says before putting in the key code, which makes the wall turn slightly and allow the students through. Once on the other side of the wall, they could see an impressive setup of equipment, as well as hearing Erp groaning in muffled pain. They hurry over and see the man laying down on a special bed to let him float a bit while Sana while using a variety of equipment to work on his back and arm, his very scarred back and arm. They don't bring attention to themselves for a while, as it was clear this was something their teacher needed. The man seemingly passing out after a few more adjustments and actions taken by the head of the medica department. Dio, type regiam odia iter questuomo a ripernersi a traver la pace. Amen. After saying this, Izuku and Aim make themselves known. I suppose it isn't too surprising someone eventually questioned the matter. Even less so for you young man. Perhaps you are a Holmes. Izuku raised his eyebrow at that before asking his teacher what was wrong with Erp. She sighed before saying, it is a matter that would be best if he explained it. But suffice to say, he's something of a reflection of what the life of a beauty can lead to. The two look at the man who saved them and introduce them to the world of armed detectives, as well as the scars that covered his back and parts of his arm. This damage looks pretty old. Not only that, but from what I piece together you have to work on him once a year right. Indeed, it used to be worse for him. I actually took up learning and trying to figure out other ways of treatment to help him. He was my teacher after all, Sana said while looking at the man with admiration, and this confirmed some of what Izuku suspected, though waiting to get his answers from William Earp himself. Who are you really sir, and how did you end up in this state? Were the two questions Izuku wanted to ask once the man had awoken. No POV. Izuku and I am sit in the hidden room to wait for their teacher to awaken. How do you think he ended up like this? I in question while resting her head on her hands. Izuku sighs before saying, he probably got into a fight that was more extreme than we could imagine. Though that doesn't explain other details. The learning ninja raised an eyebrow at that. While she wanted to ask what he meant, she chose to wait. I'll follow his lead on this. He's the one who investigated more and even questioned what was going on. Yes, that's something Herb Sensei saw in him, she thinks with a smile while looking back at the teacher. The students have to wait at least an hour before William starts to awaken. He doesn't get up, but the man does start stirring and opens his eyes to see the two waiting for him. What the? Izuku, I am. What are you doing here? We followed you. A number of things seemed odd when we arrived, and they started to add up as time went on. Izuku said while looking at the man with concern, remembering the number of scars his teacher's back had. Herp put his face back into the pillow he was laying on with a groan. Once that was done he just asked, how much do you know? And what all do you want to know? I am looked at Izuku and could see some gears turning in the boy's mind. But she interrupted and noted that they knew he was much older than he looked. Or at the very least someone who looks remarkably like you. Anything you'd like to say. William chuckled before asking if they could help him to get more comfortable. Izuku partially suspected that he was avoiding the question, but Iam was inclined to helping. And adjusted where the pillows were situated. With a few grunts and sighs, Erp started some of his story. You are correct that I'm much older than I look. The truth is, well you better buckle up. Erp says before noting that he had been a teacher at the school for a long time. Since its founding over 60 years ago. How is that possible? You don't have a quirk that extends your life. And I'm pretty sure whatever that magic gun you use doesn't extend your lifespan either. Izuku exclaimed in confusion. The old gunman smiled and said his story goes back to about when quirks were first unleashed by IU. I was a young teenager when society started to break down due to the chaos of quirks. We Buddha tried to help the police keep the peace, but more and more quirk beings grew to resent us. And it came to a head when I first started teaching at the old Buddha High. Izuku and Iam's jaws dropped at that and asked if the man was serious. That happened 80 years ago. How is it you still look this young? Iam exclaimed with her eyes swirling. You know, it is easier to explain when I can finish my story without interruptions. The two blush and cough before taking a seat. Izuku asks the man if he can continue. Anyway, it was around that time the MLA was really getting started. Distro's words inspired enough of the dumb animals that they were up for attacking any government organization hoping to protect the peace and people. And we were a major target. 
he described the proclamation of making more generations of oppressors at Butte High and that they should all be killed to make way for the true masters of the world. We had expected it, but it was still a heavy blow when they attacked. We lost so many good people and students that day. I remember the teachers noting there were hundreds of students and a number of full-time professionals at this school. How many were there and how many attacked you all? Izuku queried while considering the scope of the attack. There were about 500 of us Butte if you counted the students. Of that, a little under half were adults like myself, and they hit us with 3,000 quirk users at the time. The scope of the attack shocked the teens and they weren't surprised the school fell. But the man surprised them by saying, who said we lost? His smirk conveyed there was more to the story and they waited for him to continue. He explained that they had been anticipating the attack and with the various technology and some of the skills of SSR, they were able to do some major damage right away and cut their forces down. Didn't stop them though. They still rushed us, using the handful of mutant types that broke down the barriers we had put up. And even with the firepower we put out, it didn't stop them. The villains continued to attack and take more lives as the battle raged, until the Stroh and his lieutenants took to the field. The bastard was pissed that this wasn't an easy fight like he assumed that we'd just fold to the monsters that they all had become. So he started up his quirk to attack, Earp said before asking if one of the kids could bring him some water. After drinking, he continued the story. His quirk was linked to his anger, causing him to transform into the true monster he always was. He bulked up and charged in himself and started killing whoever was in arm's length. Still got shot a lot though, Earp frowned while remembering the sight and sounds, how he seemed to enjoy killing the students he viewed as oppressing them, when in truth he was just giving in to the monster he was infected with, same as all of those who followed him and it fell to William to try and take the animal down. I'd already disabled or killed a number of quirk users in protecting our weapon stores. But after I heard the screams of a few, I left my post to intercept, and saw the beast looking like Ku Culhane in a warp spasm state, holding a few he had killed and laughing at their weakness. Izuku and Ian gripped their fists and grew angry frowns upon hearing that, remembering it was the same thing many had told them over the years. So, how did you stop him? Ian said while wiping some angry tears from her eyes. William looked to his right hand before sighing and saying it was a hard fight. He was about to go after some others who were protecting others. When I pulled my guns and started blasting away, my rounds did a bit more since they were heavier caliber, but it wasn't quite enough, he said while flashing back to that day. Herb quickly drew his pistols and unloaded his .357 round into Distro, causing the man to bleed in a few places. You devolved animal. Distro roared before charging the gunman. Who's the animal here? The one attacking students and teachers, or the ones protecting their charges and friends. William sparred back while sliding under the villain's charge. He quickly reloaded his guns and kept firing at the monstrous man and evading his attacks. But when Distro shrunk down a bit, Herc took his chance to engage up close and brutalize how he could with Gunkata. Though this ended up being counterproductive, as it fueled Distro's anger and he grew larger than before, and Herc was swatted away and into a wall. The monster tried to attack and finish him, but the American wouldn't go down easily, quickly taking some shots at his foe's face and damaging one of his eyes. While Distro recoiled in pain from that, Herc removed himself from the wall. Prep think he might have broken a few things. But I can't stop, he thought before taking a few shots, and noticing that certain areas hit did more to the man. You really think these are the next step, when you now have more obvious sensitive areas. He shouted before blasting the sensitive joints and even the groin of his foe, making Distro collapse even as his anger made him grow more. But a problem soon came when a few students arrived to help. The villain saw his chance and attacked the children when he had recovered slightly. William saw this and leapt in front of his students, taking another powerful strike from Distro that launched him into the wall. Before he could recover, he struck Erp again and again, before picking up the man in his enlarged hand, squeezing to break his bones, primarily finishing and breaking Erp's back. The gunman let out a cry of pain as his back and right arm were crushed, but that wasn't enough to stop him. He should all just die. We and our quirks are the next stage and step. We will call the weakness that is the quirkless. Distro roared while holding up Erp. What makes you think I'm done fighting? And what makes you assume you've won? William choked out while moving his left gun up a bit. The villain laughed cruelly before saying, it wouldn't matter if you did get that gun up. You're out of bullets. While well, my quirk is still running strong. That's why we're the betters. William wasn't going down, but he smirked. It shows how stupid you and those who think powers are the absolute are. You didn't even notice an important factor. As he brought the queen of clubs up, he flipped a special switch on the side. This gun has two barrels, Herp said as the mechanism shifted. Distro's eyes widened as William pulled the trigger to fire the bullet in special .44 magnum barrel of the gun. One that impacted on the villain's head and turned it into red mist. So that's some of how I wound up like this. The teen's eyes were wide after the tale of his fight with the first leader of the MLA. Izuku shook out of his stupor first and said, Okay, that does explain some of the injury, but not how you're still alive. Erp rolled his eyes and said he was getting to that. After the attack a number of us were called back home or went into hiding while society was trying to rebuild. Oh yeah, I honestly assumed I was going to have to live out my life as a vegetable after what happened. 
but there were others who had different plans. Apparently, the remnants of the U.S. government, armed detective organizations, and military agreed he was too valuable of an asset to lose. So they used a very dangerous surgery on me to repair and replace my broken spine, as well as making sure I'd be able to fight back more when needed. How? What could have given you these regenerative powers? I am asked in stunned amazement. Hurricane or colored metals. It's also known as the metals of the gods. The USA had found a few pieces of it after a time, as well as making their own variation of it. Earp said while remembering the surgery. They had to cut his back and arm open to insert a few pieces of the various metals to allow him to get any capability to move again. As you can tell, it worked. But with a lot of side effects, least of which is my aging has been slowed to a crawl. And apparently thanks to it, I have other capabilities. Not that I've taken the time to learn them. Why not? Izuku asked with some confusion. William looked at the boy with some annoyance, but finally relented by saying, it's because it's a cheat. I didn't earn this, I didn't exactly ask for all of this, but I'm stuck with it, and I refuse to be controlled or let it consume me like all of those with quirks. He grunted a bit as some of the pain in his back started acting up. I am then went to find Romano to check on the man. Just suppose you were to use the powers. Any ideas on what you could do? Izuku asked, both fascinated and worried for his mentor, who growled before listing off the few hurricane that had been implanted in his back namely a reverse hurricane that the USA had developed, and was capable of negating the powers of supernatural beings, a lapis colored metal that could give him an omnipresent sight on a battlefield, and lazarette metal that would let him teleport long distances if used. I also have a bit of the scarlet metal in my back. It's got a few known powers since a possible family member of yours used to have it. Izuku stopped at that and asked what he meant. Herb said the story could wait till a little later. Right now, I think I need some more help, he said while gripping the sides of his bed in pain. Romano returned and told the students to leave. I'll take care of my teacher. You have classes to worry about. Izuku wanted to know more, but Ayam grabbed his arm. He's not in a condition to talk right now. Let it be Izuku, Ayam said. Her tone firm as was the look on her face. He sighed and said they'd have more questions later. Once they left though, both needed to process what he'd told them. To think there's items that can do all of that. What else don't we know about the world? Izuku said while walking back to the dorms. There could be even more than you know. I've seen some odd things and people in the SSR section. I am said while remembering a few students who kept their appearances hidden. And yet she still saw things she only believed were from quirks or fairy tales. The next day, Herp was back in teaching as usual, even beating I am and Izuku senseless during an assault training session. How is it he can go from barely able to move and back to kicking ass in less than a day? Izuku said while nursing a black eye. The ninja girl groaned that his was probably a perk of the metal in his back. But this was also the time that Izuku could ask about what he and a few other teachers had been saying about him. You keep name dropping Holmes and saying I'm his descendant. But I have no idea what you're going on about, Izuku says while catching the man after classes. Herp thinks about it for a moment before agreeing to explain more to the boy. So, back in the day you had a relative who was very close to some very powerful people, the lead of whom was Kenji. He was the partner, and later romantic partner, of Area Holmes Kanzaki, also known as Holmes IV. He noted that the girl had forced herself into being partners with the Toyama teen, becoming akin to the Watson for Area, which is why you keep referring to I as that. Izuku asked with a confused gaze. William shrugs and says, yeah, more or less. Though as much as I'd like to say that is who you are descended from, I'm not 100%. The gunman explained what he knew of Kanzaki's group that worked to clear her framed mother's name, Team Baskerville. Among the members, there were some very notable names aside from Holmes. For example, you could be related to that young lady, Herp said before nodding to a young woman with long red hair. See, she's got an interesting mixed history. Her name's Hasaki Kuruka, but we've come to know her as the latest Lupin. In other words, the latest descendant of Arsene Lupin. Thanks to that family being exposed to so much blue hurricane over the years, it's manifested in what she assumed was just a quirk. One she could barely control. But I showed her she wasn't what she assumed and she could have a different life to lead. Okay, that still doesn't explain how we could be related. Izuku said while wide-eyed at the woman before him. Erp noted he was getting to that and it had to do with the fourth Lupin being on Team Baskerville. And let's just say she was. Quite the flirt and very open about her sexuality. To the point it honestly wouldn't surprise me if she did do it with Kenji at some time. Izuku blushed at this and asked if there were more. Yep, let's see aside from an actual Watson being falling for him. Ah yes, there was the lead maiden of Hitogi Shrine. From all accounts she was crazy obsessed with him. I don't think you want to know just how far that went. So, you might have the potential of Kirijutsu. The last one mentioned was a descendant of Genghis Khan himself. She was one of many girl that follow the will of the Lapis Metal helped to give her insane sniping capabilities, even firing along an animal's spine to temporarily paralyze them. Herp said before noting that Kenji had been kidnapped by the girl as part of a strange marriage custom, but later fell for him normally as they worked as a team. The teen's face was blue, and he wondered aloud, so am I going to attract a harem or something? The man shrugged and said, who can say kid? But it would work for you in the long run. 
In the meantime, I think you should get something of a reward for piecing together my secrets. You and I aim. Herp said he'd be willing to make them some weapons with his Ando skills. Izuku hummed for a few minutes before asking if he could make him a pistol. Similar but different to yours. Namely, it can fire .357 rounds. But I want to be able to shoot ten of them when needed. Herp whistled and noted that the gun would be a tall order. But I think I can make something. How about you go check with I aim and see what she wants? The young man agreed and ran off. While William looked over to Hasaki again remembering how he found her with the greater proof of how evil Quirks could be. A villain who believed himself a god because of his power and the ability to change the weather. But Earp had given the man and most of his team a harsh lesson in hubris. When the fool tried to electrocute him with lightning, the gunman shut it down with the various tools of a beauty, before rushing him while using the peacemaker and a few other tools, using the portals created to close the gap and get behind the villain shoving his jack of diamonds knife through the villain's lungs and a few other organs. And when the fool tried to brag himself up again, Herp blew his brains out with his gun, then crippling the monstrous villain with him thanks to some gas grenades and using a .44 magnum hollow point round through the monster's chest. That left the other two at his mercy, more or less. And he proved something to the girl who called herself Slice because of her quirk. After defeating her mummy ally, she tried to cut him down as well, only to be shocked when he grabbed her and she could no longer use her power, because it wasn't a quirk but a result of the blue hurricane her family was exposed to, and thus something the reverse hurricane in his back could negate. He knocked her out after that and brought her back in BH to learn more about who she was. It took a few years, but she was willing to believe, and stuck around, if only so she could get revenge on the one who killed her friends. But that's fine. Now then, Herb thought before checking an email he got from some government allies. They had a job they wanted him to take care of and it involved trouble that could be coming for all of Japan. Looks like I'm hunting some rats again. Sorry, Izuku. That gun might have to wait, William said before heading to leave the school grounds. No POV. Izuku was practicing on the range with his 9mm until Earp returned. You're getting comfortable with that. Sure, you want to change? Mela asked while spinning an SMG. You sure you should be playing? Spinning that gun of yours? Izuku asked with a raised eyebrow. Safety's on and there's no clipping kid. But seriously, do you really want a revolver? Sure, it's not the same power, but a 9mm has plenty of stopping power. Or a hail of them like I prefer, the Okinawan instructor said before brandishing her guns toward the targets. The boy shook his head and noted that he wanted more than just a standard. We beat a kind of blend and as is with normal police, let alone the other various agents we have. I want something that can stand out for me. Same for this butterfly knife. Izuku then flipped the weapon in question around while looking it over. The other teacher of assault sighed before saying, then you might want to check out the Ando department. They could probably set you up with something good. Izuku looked at her funny but agreed, planning to head there after taking care of an assignment from Inquesta. The assignment being an investigation of an instructor to see what they could learn. But Izuku quickly bypassed what the instructor, Takamagahara Nabayuki, had tried to give him, by noting that he'd already tailed Earp and found out about some of his history. Okay, didn't expect you to tail him of all people. Well, I guess that's fine, the bespectacled man said with smile and nod. With that done, Izuku made his way over to the Ando department. I could use more than just a gun. Maybe, maybe a new blade would be good. Izuku thought aloud while walking to the workshops, only to be bowled over by someone. He shook his head slightly before opening his eyes, to the sight of frilly pink panties. Crep, prep, prep. Izuku thought while he could feel his excitement growing, even as the girl who ran him over screamed and jumped back. You pervert. Taste the edge of my sword, the silver-haired girl said before Izuku sat up and put a gentle hand on both her lips and broadsword. I'm sorry about that little miss. Or perhaps June Phil. H.M. Izuku said with his eyes sharp and smile coy. This made the girl who bumped into him blush brightly as well as dropping her sword. Izuku stood before extending a hand to the girl. Are you alright? You didn't get too scuffed up I hope. Izuku said as she stood. Nond. Besides, I was the one who bumped into you monsieur. Um, what is your name? Izuku looked the girl over once before giving his name. She was of a slighter build, and around his height, with silver hair and bright blue eyes. Then again, perhaps I've just gotten used to Iam's impressive assets. Izuku thought to himself as the girl gave her name. I am Jean Dark, the 40th. I'm an Informa student here. I was on my way to. Oh no, I'll be late. You will as MX sir. I need to hurry. Jean said before scurrying off to her probable assignment for her course. The green teen's enhanced mind contemplated on the name she gave with a hum. Jean Dark, eh? Interesting to see her. Perhaps someone to get to know later, he mused before reaching the main arsenal maintenance building. Inside there were various machines and other students working on the gear needed to. But none of them took notice of Izuku while he was looking around. Hey, you want something or are you just here to gawk? Izuku heard behind him. He turned and then had to look up. Looking down at him with a raised eyebrow was a tall dark-skinned girl wearing a boy's uniform. From what little Izuku could make out, she had some impressive muscles under said uniform and had some calluses on her hands. Not to mention a scar under her eye. No ma'am, I'm here mostly to get a new weapon. Just a knife or similar blade. I don't believe we've met. Midoriya Izuku, the green teen says before extending a hand to the woman. 
She just gives him an annoyed look before saying, Do you see a ma'am here? My name's Juki. Juki Henry. Izuku is intrigued by that name and complimented her on it fitting. Interesting to hear a Japanese name mixed with a very American one. Anyway, could you help me? Izuku asks. Juki grumbles a bit before nodding to him to follow her to her workstation, only to be surprised by it being vandalized. Namely with graffiti calling her Jaru, Shiman, Gaijin, or Gorilla and her tools scattered around. And while Juki was mad, she also knew she couldn't do anything about it, given she didn't have a way to prove who did the damage. Izuku though is furious, as this happened a lot. Juki said it wasn't his problem and just asked him to work on what he needed. Izuku could see some minor tears building, but she covered it up. Izuku sighed before asking for a few of the standard beauty tools. Grapple belt, lockpick gear, sharpening and cleaning gear, and a new holster. Is that all? For now, yeah. How long will that take? He asked while taking note of the damage and a few other things while looking around the workstation. Memorizing the handwriting and a few other details of the damage. The large girl shrugged and said it would take her a day or two. Okay, I look forward to what you can do, Chisana Riddy. Izuku said with a smile. One that made Juki's ears turn red as she asked him to leave. While leaving the workshop, Izuku took note of few of the boys and girls among the other Ando students. Picking out three boys and girls who were talking about what they had done to her. He was far enough away that he couldn't hear them, thus putting the jerks on edge. Instead he read their lips and figured out the rest. As he was coming down from hysteria mode, Izuku finished putting together some ideas for what to do next. But I'll need some help, he says while making his way to the research division, hoping to collaborate with Ayim for the investigation. And yet again he was knocked flat, this time by Ayim who was screaming no while running out of the CVR section, in what basically accounted to strings of floss holding up two squares and a triangle. Izuku doesn't get the fun, chance to soak it up as the blood rushed to his head so fast that it knocked him out, namely as the triangle came undone. He woke up a bit later in a very nice bed. Sorry about that Izuku. I just, well my instructor was really pushing all kinds of things on me. I am said while checking on him. Well of course, we need to really accentuate that bust and butt of yours. Corazon said while licking her lips while eyeing up her and Izuku. The boy gulped before asking where he was. The CVR department's practice section. For various special techniques. Care to learn about a few of them? Ooh, perhaps you could practice with Mido boy here. The teacher said with a shiver as she imagined the two together. I am freaked out again and threw a steel fan from her pocket to get Rain to stop. Only for both her and Izuku to be shocked when she deflected the weapon with a hidden knife. And was then promptly in front of them. A daring her at Iam's head and a stiletto at Izuku's neck. Don't forget, I'm a beauty as well. Just because I'm always acting flirty doesn't mean I can't give you a fight when needed, the voluptuous teacher said with a slightly shattered look in her eyes. Izuku and Iam gulped before asking their teacher to not kill them. She chuckled slightly before saying, You should consider what I've said I am Chan. I do believe he could bring out the best in you. The girl blushed while Izuku gets out of the bed. He caught her before she could run off again and asked for her help. Once outside of the research buildings, Izuku relayed what he'd seen to her. And the girl looked equally ready to give all of those involved the taste of her ninjutsu flames. Okay, let's take it down a bit. We need proof before we do anything. So we investigate. Can you listen in on a few of them? The girls mainly. I can handle the guys. Okay, I'll listen in on the few you described. See what they're thinking and what not. I am said with a minor pout. With the plans made by both students, they set about investigating the six involved. And Izuku found his targets to be a bit lacking in reasoning and personal stakes for going after the girl. One guy is just mad that she beat him more than once in hand-to-hand -hand drills. The other sounds like he's only doing this because of one of the girls. And the third, well frankly it seems like he's just being swept along by the others. Izuku thought after a couple of days eavesdropping. I am meanwhile was having to deal with a group of catty, obnoxious, and scheming girls. Those guys it's mostly about a touch of pride. In fact, I doubt they'd do anything if those girls weren't egging them on. Especially Hino Ryaiko. If it wasn't for Henry-san, she'd probably be the top fighter among the girls. Let alone the fact she seems to have a problem with where she's from. The others are just jealous because of her skills and looks. Izuku let out a breath before saying, I doubt that's something most Japanese will get past anytime soon. We just need to get them to reveal themselves or admit what they had a hand in. I'll come up with some plans eventually. For now, I'm going to visit someone. The ninja pouted a little at this since she had an idea who he was going to see. Why do you keep coming back? Juki asked while doing some work with the Logi vehicles. Tightening parts while just in her sports bra, before bringing her coveralls up. She's more stacked than I realized. Maybe she uses a sarashi. Izuku thought before shaking out of it and asking if she could do some work for him. As well as asking if she wanted some help. Plus, well I thought you could use a friend. Izuku said with a small smile. The half-American girl looked at him like he was nuts and just said to suit himself. She worked on a few of his tools and gadgets again before doing some adjustments to his pistol. This is a nice Beretta you've got here, and you've maintained it well. If you'd like, I can make some modifications to it. No thanks, I'm uh, actually going to be getting a new gun soon. From Herb Sensei. Upon hearing that, Juki's hand stopped moving. Hold on, you're getting a weapon, a custom gun, made Master Herb. She asked while slightly turning towards Izuku. 
When he answered that it was true, the dark-skinned girl's face lit up. No way. I've heard he never does that unless you really impress him. And I would love to work on or just look at those custom pieces of his. The King of Hearts and Queen of Spades are almost like legends in Amdo. And the Jack is one of the best blades too. Izuku was surprised by this turn of her mood. But he smiled to himself before saying, You know it's kind of cute. The way you look when you start talking about equipment and guns. This stops the Henry girl's thoughts, and she jerkily turns back toward Izuku. Her face was bright red before ducking down and asking that he forget about that. It's fine. I kind of have the same habits. I tend to ramble when I'm analyzing things. Quirks used to be my go-to. Back when I wished I could be a hero. Now I focus more on the lessons that Erp Sensei and the rest of the teachers can give us. You're not alone. The smile Izuku gives her makes Juki's heart flutter a bit before she thanks him for saying that. Hey uh, I know you said that Master Erp is going to make your gun. But what if I made you a new blade? Izuku smiles at this and admitted that he had wanted to ask at some point. But first and foremost, I just wanted to be your friend. Izuku says with a straight face. She doesn't blush too much this time but does thank Izuku. Give me a few days. I think I can do something good for you. You know, it's thanks for helping. Juki says before turning back to her station with a small smile. After that in a few days of observing, one of the boys did happen to notice Izuku. You think I wouldn't catch on that you've been following me? The largest teen Izuku was following, Amadai Chujuro, said to Izuku one day. Izuku shrugged and acknowledged that his tailing skills needed work. How long did you know? Had a funny feeling about a day ago. Between assault drills, you seemed to be watching me real close. And then you were following me after class. Izuku smiled and then laughed a bit at this. When asked what was so funny, Izuku responded by saying he hadn't been spying just recently. I've been keeping an eye on you for almost five days. The larger teen snarled before asking what this was about. Oh wait, I know. This is about the gorilla, isn't it? What difference does it make to you? Izuku narrowed his eyes at that before asking if he'd forgotten what so many of them had endured when it came to quirks and anything outside of New Beauty High. Instead of tearing her down, you should be trying to learn from her in some way. The larger teen looked down and away before reiterating that it had nothing to do with Izuku. Just because she may be a bit stronger, doesn't mean you get to make her feel like so many others made you feel. Or how plenty like that have made those who are heteromorphic types feel. This seems to strike a different chord in the young man and he looks down slightly. Hamadai still feels like he wants to attack Izuku, but he chooses to go about the matter in a different way. We'll settle this in the training grounds. First to get tagged with the paint rounds loses the match. Sound fair? He said while loading his Glock. Izuku smiled before checking his Beretta. His opponent quickly drew his weapon and Izuku dodged to the side. He fired a few shots quickly, but Amadai dodged as well. The two continued a pattern of dodging and trying to sneak up on one another, only for the grounds to be more covered in paint. Izuku was getting frustrated, so he worked his way up and around to a high ground position to get the drop on his opponent. His foe had a larger frame, so Izuku could notice him quickly behind some walls. He fired off a round, but the shot impacted on the wall instead. Izuku cursed at that as Amadai ducked away and around a maze wall and then into a hidden passage. A high ground doesn't always guarantee a victory. Amadai thought before making his under and then behind Izuku, who was taken off guard when his opponent appeared behind him. Izuku dodged but in turn was left vulnerable as he fell off his perch. The larger student made his way over to the boy with the gun trained on him. I've gotta win this. It'd be easier in hysteria mode. But I shouldn't rely on that. So, I'll try something else, the green team thought before taking the surroundings into account. Nice try. But I've been training a bit longer than you have. Amadai says while keeping his gun trained. True. Though that doesn't mean I'll make it easy. Izuku said before firing a shot at a target station trigger. One that would launch paint rounds at students if they didn't dodge quick enough. The big teen did dodge, but his roll left him open to Izuku shooting him. With a double tap to the chest, Izuku had won. Nice job. I'll keep my end and stop messing with her. Amadai said before shaking hands with Izuku. The teen nodded before leaving to check in on I am. And she was currently pouting in her room after she'd taken care of her job. I am. You good. Izuku asked while letting himself into her room. The girl was red-faced and had her head buried in her sheets when he arrived. She turned away from him and made it seem like she really wanted to be left alone. Okay. I guess you're not feeling okay. Isla, check on you later. Izuku said while excusing himself. I am burst from the sheets and called out to him. No I'm fine. Really? It's just... Well, I am said in a panicked voice, not realizing that she hadn't changed out of something special. Izuku's eyes bugged out and he felt hysteria mode taking over at seeing Aim in her family's ninja garb. That being a kanoichi dress in her preferred shade of purple. One with long tassels attached to her obai and tabai footwear. But the sides were basically cut out and showed a lot of side boob in her hips. And the cut in the front was so deep it was almost below her breasts. Aim screamed upon realizing what she'd jumped out at him looking like blubbering a bit about Corazon forcing it on her before she started tracking the other boys. And then I, well I fell on them while hanging upside down. Though it was probably because I kept trying to keep my skirt section up. And when I fell on them, they, one had a hand on my chest and the other on my butt. 
I am wailed. She then said she failed to get more info, that she was dirty, and that Izuku wouldn't work with her anymore. Ayin was interrupted by Izuku pushing her to the wall and slamming his palm on it next to her head. Taped on, Ayin thought while looking at Izuku's face, a face that had shifted thanks to hysteria mode. I would never abandon you Ayin. You mean too much to me to do anything like that. You can trust me on that, Izuku said to his friend, his eyes never wavering, his green shining into her blue. Her blush was still bright, but she was able to relax for a moment and she dried her eyes. This could work to our advantage I am. Not in a you seduce them type of thing, but you or I could use this to bring before the teachers. Izuku reasoned after stepping away from I am. He said it could be a way for them to be at least observed. Only the next day, the two boys in question seemed distracted and in a weird state of contemplation. Izuku tailed them both and was disturbed by the argument they ended up having with one another. Namely over where butts or breasts were better. He had a blue shade over his eyes while hearing that and just walked away. Hey, he heard from the side while walking away from the arguing duo on the roof. Izuku looked over and saw the green-eyed blonde-haired Ryaiko glaring at him. Can I help you with something? He asked while taking stock of the girl. Just what do you think you're doing? Messing with my group and plans. She asked while pulling out a stun tanfa. Izuku was a little worried because he didn't know what this girl would do. An hysteria mode would be hindrance in this situation, he thought before saying he had no idea what she was talking about. That seemed to incise the girl more and she lashed out with her tanfa. Izuku quickly backed away while the girl ranted for a moment. Don't play dumb with me. You got that meathead Amadai to back off. And somehow you've undone the hold I had on those two idiots. Izuku gave her a flat look before saying, You're nuts, you know that right. Besides, why are you so focused on being the best or beating Henry-san? Hino snarled and said that was something all members of the Hino family specialized in. All the women of my family are some of the best fighters in beauty. And I'll prove to be the same. Before the green teen could try to reason with her, he felt a shock hit his back. Hino's two friends had snuck up behind him and taser him. I think we'll send a message to that black Gajan bitch, Ryaiko said with a twisted smile. Juki was leaving the Ando studio while looking at what she had made. The one ended up being more like a carambit knife, and the other is more like a kukuri. I hope he likes them, Juki said with a small blush. On her way though, she bumped into Ayam. Oh, you're that ninja girl, right? What's up? The taller girl asked with a tilt of her head. Ayam looked up and asked if Izuku had been by the Ando studio. I haven't seen him for a while. Not since classes ended, Ayam said with some worry. The two girls thought about what could be going on when Juki got a message on her phone. What the? You want your boy toy? Come and get him. Wait, Midoriya. She asked before seeing him tied up in a different section of the school. Ayim saw this as well and her eyes went red, while flames of a purple hue shimmered around her. Where are they? She asked with a glare directed Juki's way. She gulped before asking her to calm down for a moment, while also wondering what she got herself mixed up in now. Now POV. Ayim's flames continued to roil as Juki tried to figure out where the photo had been taken. Okay so, I think this is in one of the storage sections of the Logi and Ando department. Yes, that makes some sense given who we're dealing with. Juki says while looking at the photo Hino had sent. The ninja girl was about to leap off and fight the girls in question, but Juki stopped her. Look, there are ten different storage areas. Are you just going to search them all? She asked with a raised eyebrow. I am pouted and said, no, but we still need to find him. Any ideas? Juki hummed before noting that it would be easier if they had a connect ally. Given they could hack into the various cameras and give them details on who has gone where. I am looked down before saying they could just go meet with some from connect. I think there were some who were exceptional. Let's go, she said, sprinting off ninja style and leaving the American in the dust. Henry raised her eyebrow at that before hurrying off herself, and found herself needing to stop Ayim from roughly questioning everyone. And here I thought they'd be intimidated by me. Look, take it down a notch and maybe we can get somewhere. Well, it's just, I don't know, a lot of the other departments. I only knew about you because Izuku mentioned you were making a weapon for him. I am defended before deflating. Juki understood that she was worried, and told her that running around in a panic wasn't going to help Izuku. That was when a new voice spoke up. Pardon, I have been listening for a bit. Monsieur Midoriya is in trouble. The two girls turned to see Jean Dark, who not only looked at the pair sheepishly, but also enviously. Namely Ayam's chest and Juki's height. She pushed past though and reiterated her question. Yes, yes, Izuku's been taken by a group to the Ando section. Can you help us? The silver-haired girl's eye twitched as Ayam's breast bounced before her eyes. But she agreed and asked what details they could give. Right? Uh. He's being held in one of the Ando sections. By a trio of girls. One is from Ando, but the leader is Hino Ryaiko. And she's from Assault. Juki said before handing over her phone and the image that was sent. Jean though only needed to look for a moment before heading to a Connect computer station. Rapidly hacking into the system and then the accounts of the three troublesome Bude students. Okay, I have him. Looks like the fourth storage section and down to the fifth floor. Lots of places to hide down there. I'll guide you. The French girl grabbed a couple of earbuds and passed them to the girls. Juki takes one while Ayam looks at Jean with some suspicion. Why or how do you know Izuku? She asked with narrowed eyes, and the suspicion increased when Jean blushed. Not the time girl, we've gotta move. Though, you might want some extra gear. 
Juki said while looking I am over, who looked down before considering what she was getting at. With a sigh she asked, Can you get or make me something quick that could be hidden in ninja gear? The taller girl smiled before saying she might have just the thing. The two head back to their departments, I am a bit more reluctantly so. But they prepared quickly to find Izuku amid the equipment and armament of the Ando storage. I'm still lost on what all the point is to this. Why are you trying so hard to one-up or be better that Juki? Does it really matter that much? Izuku asked while tied up, his eyes looking around for any possible way to escape. Riaiko and her goons though wouldn't be swayed. Or rather Riaiko wouldn't. The other two seemed to just be interested in seeing how the fight would go. And if they'd get some fun fights too. Okay, one's with Logi. Looks like she's got a bunch of gear and gadgets. The other, I think, an SSR. And Hino I've seen in passing in the assault classes. She's good, but Henry is better from the few fights I've seen. The blonde said that it wasn't his concern and turned in a huff while muttering to herself. Izuku raised an eyebrow at this before noticing something subtle. You have gotta be kidding me. No, wait, I don't have full proof. But if I'm right, then I may have more options than I thought. While he was thinking about that one of her partners, Nakasarachi Nemu from Ando, reported that the Juki had arrived. She's alone. Good, I'll deal with her myself. Riaiko said while loading her gun. She told Nemu and the SSR Bute and Ave Duank to keep an eye on Izuku. Riaiko kept her Glock aimed and ready to ambush Juki, waiting for the girl to come out of the elevator, only to be surprised by a buckshot round striking her in the area around where she was hiding. I'm not stupid. I had a feeling you'd try to ambush me. Juki announced before firing again and pulling out a single shot .410 pistol. The girl snarls before rolling and shooting back with her pistol, missing by a few centimeters. Damn it, you're a big target. It should be easy to hit you. Hino screams before firing again. Though part of this was just a feint as she was also getting close to attack with her tonfa and knife, sliding under Juki's next buckshot rounds and stunning the girl with her tonfa. Before she could be cut though, the American girl powers through and catches Riaiko's knife hand. I'm not going down easy, she said before headbutting her bully in the face and kicking her away. While her nose was bleeding, Riaiko had enough mind to move quickly as Juki fired her .410 again. Both curse under their breath as they take a moment to dress any injuries. While this had been happening, Izuku was keeping his eyes on his captors while looking for his moment, though it would come to him in the most awkward and pleasurable way. Namely, I am falling out of the vents above him. As she was commenting that it hurt, she realized she had landed on his lap, with her breasts pressed into his face. I'd say this is getting old, but it's still nice. Izuku commented in a muffled tone as he felt his arousal growing and hysteria mode taking over. And while initially wanting to freak out, Ayim felt a sense of relaxed enjoyment at being where she was. Though, I don't like the idea of him being tied up. She shakes her head before throwing her fans to disrupt the two other girls, and then slipping Izuku the carambit knife she had in her cleavage. Thanks, Ayim. I'm guessing Henry Chan did pretty good, right? Izuku said as he caught the knife with his pinky, then spun it so fast and precisely that he easily cut through the ropes holding him and then spun it to impact just above Anne's head. Ayan got off of Izuku's lap and said she'd take the SSR girl. No, there's no need for that. I can handle her, Izuku said while smirking towards the girls. His partner asked if he was sure before drawing her fan. He nodded and said she wouldn't have a problem with Nemu. While the girl wanted to take offense at that, more of her knew that he wasn't far off. So, she got a distance away and set some traps with her gadgets. Ayan moved as quickly as she could while avoiding some of the traps, only to be blinded by a hidden flashbang. Nemu took aim with her long-barreled Ruger and fired. On instinct, Ayan quickly moved her arm and used something special that Juki gave her. Hidden wrist guns that were now part of her outfit. Whoa, okay, didn't know I could do that. Maybe it's a benefit of my training. Ayan questioned aloud. Her opponent wouldn't let her continue to ponder as she threw out more gadgets that she had taken from her workstation. With Ayan noticing something important. So, you've got a problem with her because she makes reliable gear that is better received. And you... You make all sorts of funny gadgets and gizmos akin to what would be used in the support courses of hero schools. What of it? Nemu shouted before taking some shots at Ayim, who brought her hands together before disappearing in a flash of fire and smoke. Nemu looked around before slipping out from behind the shelves to try and find her opponent. The Ando engineer looked around in worry before spying a flash of fire from a corner, shooting at it with all of her ammo. But this was just a bluff, as it was one of Ayim's fans she had started on fire. Time to finish this. Ayim called out while holding two fingers before her face in typical ninja fashion. She then pushed off of the wall of shadows she'd been hiding in and knocked her opponent into the air. Ayim then quickly turned and leapt up with her body surrounded by her purple flames, spinning like a saw into Nemu before both returned to the ground. That's that. Ayim declared while tossing up her fan and catching it in her opposite hand, as a new pillar of fire erupted under Nemu. As the fight between Nemu and Ayim was commencing, Izuku was glaring down his opponent. She snarled before leaping at the boy with clawed gauntlets. He smirked though as he could easily make out how she was attacking, deflecting strikes before easily disarming her of her weapons. Even the guns she had hidden, Izuku slipped them off of her. How did you do that? She asked with a minor wow. Sound, fairly easily, which is how I'll stop you now, Izuku said while keeping his confident stance. 
The look in his eyes made Anna shiver and she tried to run, but that just left her more open for what Izuku had in mind. Namely, he got to her back and then gently ran his hand and fingers down her spine, increasing the shivers and stopping Ave Duank in her tracks. He then attacked her ears and neck, bringing her down to her knees. So all Izuku had to do was tie up her limbs as she turned her stomach toward him. Once she realized what happened though, she called no fair. The boy just shrugged and said all was fair in love and war. Though I do wonder how you'll perceive that from here on, Izuku said with a coy smoldering look. One that made Anna blush bright as she turned away from him. Huh, guess you didn't need my help after all. I am said as she met up with Izuku again, who agreed before noting they needed to meet up with Juki to fight Ryaiko, and the two were in something of a deadlock. Though Juki was more hurt than her opponent, Ryaiko made her way out of the section she'd hidden in and put a few more shots out, before dodging Juki's buckshot return fire and getting close to fight hand to hand, hitting her stun Tanfa close and causing the larger girl to freeze up, at least until she crumpled under the blows Ryaiko put into her. Juki was on the ground as Izuku and Aim approached, with Ryaiko celebrating at beating her rival and proving she was the better woman. Are you sure about that? Isn't most of this just a sad attempt to prove your mother and the other women of your family that you can be more? That you aren't as empty as your name suggests? Izuku said this while gesturing for Aim to hold back for a moment. He pushes his thoughts more about how Hino's family was semi-legendary for being exceptional women, how they would always prove to be the best among both genders, and how they would attract women to their side to aid them. What he finishes with sends Ryaiko over though. You've gone against the principles of a beauty here. You aren't worthy of the Hino name. Ray, this makes the blonde snap, and she points her gun at Izuku. Juki then calls out for him to catch and tosses the kukuri she'd made to him. Izuku catches it in time and cuts through the bullets in the air. And while his opponent is shocked, he rushes in to disable his foe. Though I am assumed it would be a gentle takedown. Instead, Izuku caught Ryaiko's hand and started with a strong knee to her stomach. As she went down from that, he followed up with a few punches to the face and one last haymaker, knocking his foe out. Ayim's jaw was dropped, and she asked, Ad Izuku, are you out of hysteria mode? Izuku shook his head, and his eyes told her that he was still in that state. She then asked how he was able to hurt a girl like Ryaiko, because she is actually a he. Izuku says before lifting up the girl's skirt, showing she had the parts of a boy. So, how did you figure it out? Juki asked Izuku while they were walking out of the storage area as the teachers were leading Ryaiko's group away. Izuku looked to Ryaiko or rather Ray with some sadness. At first it was because I noticed his Adam's apple and he fell off while he had me. The way he desperately talked about what the women of his family did. How they had been the top of many aspects of beauty life. My guess, since he was born a boy, they treated him poorly and like he was a failure. Juki looked to Ray with some sympathy, thinking about how desperately he seemed to try and fight her and others during sessions. And when that failed, he took to pressuring her and others into not giving their all or backing away. All to prove he wasn't. Nothing or a zero like his name would say. We'll try and get the kid some help, and maybe put some pressure on that family of crazy bitches to ease up on their psycho Amazon tendencies, Herb said behind the kids, who barely noticed him at first and freaked out when he was suddenly behind them. He smiled down at the teens and complimented them on their good work. I'd say, you've more than earned this Izuku, William says before pulling a box out of his coat pocket. Izuku gently opened the case and saw his new gun. As asked, the weapon could hold 10 rounds of .357 ammo. Etched along the side of the silver guns were intricate designs of bush clovers. In red and black, a lot of my gear has a gambling theme. So, I thought I'd make this beauty more aligned with Japanese gaming. Namely, Hanafuda cards. So when you go there, I call it Tainhagi. Herp explained while Izuku looked over his weapon, including the design of the grip and the smooth action he felt as he pulled the trigger, let alone the rifling in the barrel that would let it fire long distances. His admiration of the gun though was disrupted by Juki leaning over his shoulder to see the weapon drooling a bit as she looked at the craftsmanship that the older gunman had put in to make the weapon. Do you want to check it out? Izuku asked while trying to ignore the wet feeling on his shoulder. Can I? She asked with her eyes filled with stars. Izuku held the weapon towards the young Henry to inspect, and she took it as gingerly as possible, as though the weapon were made of fine glass. Well, looks like you found yourself a good friend, and technician if those knives are anything to go on, William said with a gaze towards the two blades in question. Izuku looked at Juki with a smile before giving I am a look as if to ask if she was okay with a full-time partnership. She pouted at first, but upon looking at her hidden gun she sighed and agreed. Henry Chan, you got a second? Izuku asked as the girl was inspecting every inch of the gun Erp made. She blushed at him calling her that and snapped back to her senses. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got time Izuku. What can I do for you? She said while handing the weapon back. Izuku spun the gun once before holstering it in his jacket. What would you say to working with me and I am full-time? Maybe, we could be like a team. Juki looked at him with surprise before asking if he was sure. I mean, a lot of people avoid me because of how I look, how big I am, and where I'm originally from. You sure you want me? She said somewhat sheepishly. Izuku took her hand before smiling and saying, There's no one better in my opinion than you. Juki Henry. This brought the blush back in full and the girl felt a measure of admiration for the green teen. First treating her like a friend and then trying to help her when she had trouble. 
So she quickly glomped him and said, If you, you say something like that, how am I supposed to refuse? Izuku just smiled while pressed against her chest. While he could feel his arousal growing, it was damped by the gratitude he could feel in her embrace. Ayan though was trying to pull the two apart in her jealousy. Herp just smiled from the sidelines before it fell while thinking about what could be coming in the next year. If those criminals are right about someone looking to target UA, then they may need more help than we thought. No POV. After the trouble with Ryaiko or Rei and Juki, Izuku was happy to say he now had a full-time and very capable partner in making Buda gear. Juki's work was always reliable, and she was plenty quick on the repairs and maintenance. How do those special daringers feel? She asked Ayan one day between working on some armor and other devices for the ninja girl, who pulled a few of the small weapons from hidden pockets of her clothes and even checked her Kanoichi outfit to feel them out. Not bad, and you said these fire longer distances compared to most daringers. She asked while aiming the guns. Yeah, the barrels are just a bit longer and I managed to rifle the interior. Wasn't easy though, the Afro-descent girl mentions while adjusting her own guns. Speaking of that and while you're working on your guns, can you help me with the sight on Tainhagi? Izuku asked with his usual lopsided smile one that makes Juki turn red for a moment before agreeing. She shows him the basics of what to do but ends up having to take the gun and screwdriver away from him. I'll just do it. Your hands aren't the right kind of nimble for this. Izuku looks down at that before noting Juki's hands. And how nimbly, yet delicately they worked on gently caring for his gun. Wow, it's like watching a dance almost. Izuku whispered while watching. This made the engineer girl flinch and accidentally stab herself with the tool. While I impouted in mild annoyance, Izuku panicked before helping to patch up her hands. You shouldn't distract someone while they're working. But um, thank you, Juki shouted and then whispered. Izuku missed the last part but agreed to be more careful. I was surprised. Your hands are actually pretty soft despite the work you do. Can you please stop embarrassing me? Juki said red-faced and trying to ignore the purple flames coming from Ayam. Izuku still didn't quite get it but moved on to ask for her help on a job. We decided to take on a request from the school listings. It's nothing big, just a surveillance mission. A police district and a hero agency wanted some extra aid in investigating a Yakuza location. Juki blinked before asking why he wanted her to come along. Well, we will be listening with surveillance gear, so it'll help to have someone who can maintain it. Plus, you're packing some decent firepower, Izuku said while gesturing to her .410 pistols. I am also mentioned that she'd be doing a different side of the job. The request asked that we identify or lure some of the thugs associated with the group into traps. But I think we can take a fair number of them out, she says while making a ninja-esque pose. The Ando student gains a slightly conniving smirk before saying, Oh I think I know what you've got in mind girl. Give me a bit of time and I can make all kinds of things for you to take them out with. The two girls share a look that conveys how much they look forward to the fireworks during the mission. That part Izuku notices and realizes. But what he misses is the pair also sharing a glance that says, Just because I like or respect you doesn't mean I'm giving him up easy. The trio made their way out of the NBH barrier and back into Mustafa City to observe a certain group. Apparently these guys have been making some kind of fuss lately. Mix of drugs and weapons. Typically, this is just the police and hero's job. But they've been seeing an odd uptick in suspicious activity in recent months. So, they're willing to subcontract I guess. Izuku explained while making their way into a house next to an impressive mansion. Once inside, they set up for a few days' worth of surveillance. Juki and Izuku had borrowed listening gear and computers from Connect to record anything they could. Or rather, Jean Dark set them up with some gear. Hey, I don't know this stuff that well. But I though Jean San said this was some junky gear she could scrounge up. This stuff looks like some of the most modern and high-tech devices from Connect, Izuku asked while looking over the fairly shiny equipment. Juki's eye twitched as she knew he was correct. So, we have a tsundere French girl to compete with as well. And he still doesn't get it, she thought while feeling the heat from I am. Juki shook her head before reminding him they had a quest to complete, as did Aim or whoever wasn't on monitor duty. In her case, the free member would go out and note the appearance or name of anyone who was likely associated with the Yakuza group they were investigating. Though on the second day of the job, Aim came back with soot and a bit of blood on her. Izuku freaked out and asked if she was okay and if she needed to be bandaged up. Aim blushed before saying, I know Izuku, I'm okay, it's not my blood. That surprised the pair and she recounted how a few of the goons had tried to mug her or possibly do worse. To be honest, a year ago I'd have been running or screaming for help. But after everything that has happened, they were just annoying. So they got a taste of the true Shuranui family style. And some Koga style. Izuku and Juki let out strained laughs before moving on. But they weren't immune to getting harassed either. Izuku had to deal with jerks who just thought they could take him out because of how plain he looked. They wound up with bullets and kneecaps for that. While Juki had to use some ingenuity, buckshot rounds, and special gear to take out a number of animal-like thugs. This is ridiculous. Why do they keep doing it? I am asked after third day and burning another pair of goons. Probably to keep tabs on the area. We need to get out of here. Izuku says before starting to pack up some items. Juki tilted her head to the side before asking what he meant. Izuku reasoned that even if all the goons they beat had been taken by the police, they still could have reported who it was that had been snooping or were targets for mugging. 
meaning this shy Hiseki group might actually know who we are and that we don't belong. Izuku said while name-dropping the Yakuza crew they were hired to investigate. Turned out his suspicion was correct. Less than an hour after he hurried them out of the house, a huge man in a white t-shirt and a beak-like mask walked up to the house they were using. He was accompanied by a man in monk's clothing while still wearing a beak mask. Rappa Kendo and Tengai Hekaji. You were right. They were going to send some big guns at us. Juki said with a narrowed gaze at the pair. Izuku nodded and admitted he wanted to investigate more. But now isn't the time. We never even saw or heard the boss the whole time we were here. We'll probably get a chance in time. I am and Juki nodded before they hurry away to hand over the info they had gathered. And the one to pay and thank them was Sir Nidai himself. I'm confused though. Why aren't you children putting your quirks and skills into hero coursework? There it was. A common annoying question they had heard a few times after doing quests and jobs like this. Izuku sighed before saying, that only works if you have a quirk. In case you've forgotten, most people with quirks don't look on us with much appreciation. The man flinched at that and then recognized both Izuku and Ayam. Before he could apologize, Izuku snatched the pay envelope out of his hand, and they all left. That was a little harsh, don't you think? Nidai psychic bubble girl said with a tilt of her head. Nidai shook his head before saying, frankly no. Not after what that unfortunate young man and woman had to deal with. Remember the mass quirkless kidnappings. Bubble Girl's eyes widened, and she felt a similar shame that had hit the other heroes when it was revealed. There had been efforts to prevent similar happenings and street-level heroes had been checking corners and the like more often. But some still slipped through. We need to be better for ones like them, Bubble Girl said in resolute determination. Sir Nidai nodded before checking other details pertaining to the job they had been hired for. But he was confused on one major part. These note thugs that had been taken down and arrested. Who were the heroes who did the job? It couldn't have been those kids, he thought before cataloging the data for his case against the shy Hisaki. While that had been going on, William was doing a quest of his own, namely dealing with a dangerous trigger gang in northern Kanto. Well now, this is some potent stuff. Though given it's here, I'm guessing these are failed batches, Herp said while walking around the female head of the gang, who was currently unable to move or use her enhancing quirk thanks to a numbing gas grenade she'd gotten a lungful of. She'd had a number of capable thugs in her group, each equipped with their more perfected strains of trigger but not one of them had a chance to use it. First, because some who tried to inject themselves with the booster had it shot out of their hands before being beat senseless. Then there were those who managed to inject themselves with trigger. Herb wasn't impressed as some, like her, tried to attack him and ended up paralyzed because he was pragmatic about who he was dealing with and didn't let them use their powers, crippling them with bullets to some areas after they were dropped or just knocking them out easily. Though dot 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 to dot 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 hell, she said while hoping the mist would wear off soon. Herb hummed a moment before shooting the woman in her left butt cheek. I swear I have to use this phrase too often, but that's really not helpful. And just so you know, I'm actually being nice. If you were dealing with a friend of mine, well I'm not so sure you'd be moving ever again. The woman's eyes went wide at that threat before letting out a chuckle. It's not like it'll matter soon. With the deal we've made the whole of Hero Society will fall around you, even if you take out our members. And there's no way I'll stab them in the back. Herp notices the tremble in her voice as she says this. She's not really afraid of me, someone she's working for, or connected to has her more scared. I can't get anything out of her. But maybe Tsuzuri can, the gunman thought before pulling out a special mask. One that he forces over the mouth of the villain. The mask released a powerful gas that knocked her out for a long period of time. Once she awoke, the villain assumed that she was in a police interrogation cell, given the one wall with mirror-like glass. When the door opened though, she was surprised by the man who walked in. He looked a little younger than Earp but had an almost bored expression on his face as he smoked a hand-rolled cigarette. He was wearing a green army-like jacket over a white shirt and had cargo pants on. So, you're the one Herb Sensei picked up. Nasty little trade you've got running there, the man said before puffs and then blowing smoke in the woman's face. She coughed before asking what it mattered to him. I mean I get it. Your cops are bounty hunters, right. But what's it matter what we do? She asked while trying to break free from the chair she was chained to. The man asked if she considered what would happen to most if her trigger was sent out too far. Or if who she's working with got what they wanted, what would happen to others. What do I care? So long as I get paid. Not to mention, if they happen to get rid of some of those who have crap quirks, are mutants, or no quirk at all then it's just fine to mutants. Right as she was saying that the man spun around and kicked the woman in the side of the face so hard with his steel-toed boots, it broke parts of her jaw and knocked out multiple teeth. Though what frightened her more was that the pain was nearly ten times what she expected to feel. Ah, uh, you noticed. Well, I'm not just puffing these things for no reason. They've got a little something in them that has some very interesting effects. And these aren't the only ones I've got, the man said before pulling out the paper and a few different types of tobacco. Or what she thought was tobacco before being subjected to all of the effect the man laced into the materials. It only took a day of interrogation, and she was finally willing to talk. Though talk was somewhat generous with how messed up her face now was. You can always count on an S rank from Dagula to get the information needed. Good work, Suzuri, Herp said with a raised eyebrow to the young man in question who took a breath without smoking before addressing his former teacher. Yeah, 
but I'm not sure if we really should step in on this. I mean, you eight us have some of the best heroes. Surely, they could handle this, the interrogator says before listening to the recordings of the woman. William hung before admitting they probably could. But to be honest, I'm more concerned about a few different matters. Besides, there is someone there now I want to have a word with. The current instructor of Les Ed was about to light up again before sighing. His old teacher though stopped him and advised that he not do that. At least not for now. We might need to pull out a lot of stops for this. And, I think a certain pair would be just right for the mission to come. You ready kid? Herb said while loading his pistols in a helicopter. Across from him was Izuku and Ayim. Both outfitted with some gear that Juki had spent a good long while building. The former of whom looks like he's going to be sick. And the latter had already gotten sick. Aya, uh, I'm a little surprised you want to take me and Ayim on this intense of a mission sir. Aren't we a bit young for this? Izuku asked while trying to calm some of his nerves. Herp noted that plenty of Bude got into some crazy fights and danger long before their training finished. It's nothing new. Besides, I wouldn't have brought you along if I didn't think you were capable. So, I ask again, are you ready kid? The boy takes out his Tane Hagi and checks that it is loaded. He remembered how his teacher had made the gun for him in acknowledgement of some of his skill. And this is another way he's acknowledging that. Just more on the ground instead of with a gesture. Izuku sighed before noting that his gun was full, he holstered it under his jacket and then feels up the carambit knife behind his back before saying, Ready as I'll ever be, sir. When do we drop? Herp smiles as the door opens, and they are all looking down on the USJ dome. See you on the ground floor, the man says before easily stepping out of the craft. Is Herp sensei crazy? I am asked in a panic. Baby I am. But he does know what he's doing. So, let's follow him. Izuku said before jumping out of the helicopter. I am follows soon after and both deploy their parachutes. Herp looks up and sees the two coming down smiling before drawing his two pistols. The guns have two barrels and the bullets he fires come from the lower one, cracking and then breaking the glass dome of the USJ. As he's getting closer, Erp unbuckles his parachute to dive down into the dome. The two youths sculpt and follow their elder's lead and dove down into the USJ. I really wish he'd have gone about this a different way, Iam says as they pass through the dome. Once they did though, each showed a special trick of their uniforms. Erp's coat turned into a hang glider, Izuku's blazer became a second parachute, and Iam revealed a flying squirrel ninja wrap on her back letting them all come down into the training area with no harm. Once landed, Erp's glider became a coat again and he reloaded his revolvers. A few villains started coming at him, but the man didn't flinch. He quickly shot around him, disabling each with bullets to nerf points in other areas, making his foes crumple in pain or knocking them out. Even when they did get close, he would use gun kata to twist limbs and bash his foes with his pistols. Izuku and Ayim landed a bit later and disabled who they could with their own weapons. Ayim uses her steel fans and small holdout pistols, as well as the bracers on her arms to deal surprising injuries and damage to her foes, while Izuku takes care with each of the shots he uses on the villains he is up against. You brats think you've got a chance, a man with gun-like barrels for fingers said. He fired at the pair to take them out. Izuku stumbled into Ayim and landed face first in her breasts. Uh, sorry I umph. Izuku started but Ayim didn't let him finish. I know, but we need that right now. Izuku feels his pulse racing and his excitement growing boiling to a point where he feels it take over. He lets out a breath between Ayim's bosom and thanks her. He reloads his revolver before stepping forward. The confident gleam gained by hysteria mode shining in his eyes. The gun-fingered villain readies to shoot Izuku. The boy quickly draws his gun and unloads all ten bullets. Right down each of the finger barrels. Causing an explosion from the man's hands, mangling the limbs. When another villain charges him, Izuku sees it in the trajectory for a debilitating set of blows. Namely, using his knife to cut a few of the tendons and sensitive points along the larger man's limbs. The female villain next to the gun one tried to attack, but Ayim quickly intercepted and unleashed a combo of blows. Capped off with a leaping suplex of fire. She then threw out her fans towards other villains and engulfed the area in circles of flame, before sneaking behind a number of them and disabling her foes with nerve attacks and poison or holds to knock them out. Izuku looks toward Erp, the man facing off with a monster that was holding the hero eraser head into the ground, quickly running forward and cutting the monster's hand off with his jack of diamond and kicking his foe away. The kick didn't do much as his blow barely phased the monster before him, but it and the severed hand were enough to distract the monster while William got eraser head away. Namu kill that, whatever he is. The apparently villain shouts with an annoyed gesture. The creature rushes Erp faster than he expected and he's about to get punched, until his students take their own shots to disorient the monster. Ayim does hers while tossing a few of the goons around in the air, throwing her steel fans to cut the right fist that was charging towards her teacher. Izuku in hysteria mode meanwhile considered what he could of the creature's features, before reaching his conclusion and firing four shots right into the brain of the beast. The latter attack causes the Namu to crumple as Erp jumps back slightly. Shit that was way too close. This could be more of a problem than even Suzuri expected. But, it's not like I haven't faced monsters before. Erp says before drawing both of his guns for the fight. No POV. While the creature Namu was crumpled, William could make out something important. 
namely that the creature was regenerating and took the bullets with little difficulty. Well, that's a pain in the ass. I might run out of ammo, he says a bit loudly. Hope all the contingencies are ready, he thought while evading a few attacks. Something that the leader who introduced himself as Shigaraki Tamira mocked him for. Izuku though caught the bigger factor to what his teacher was getting at. Herb Sensei, from what I noticed, it doesn't seem like the creature can think or has a sense of self. So we probably don't have to worry about most measures we take. Good catch. Still, this won't be easy, Herp says before quickly unloading into the body of the beak beast. He noticed it regenerating easily from the bullets, as well as how it took the impacts well. Is it? I guess he's got a role in this, the gunman mused before ducking out of the way of a few attacks. But he couldn't dodge every attack thrown his way and was knocked back by a backhand strike from the monster. Luckily, he wasn't alone. Izuku reloaded his Tainhagi and used his heightened mental state to copy his mentor's trick ricocheting bullets that impacted on some of Namu's nerve clusters. It doesn't work perfectly, as Namu didn't have an entirely functioning nervous system. But it was enough to make it flinch and slow the creature temporarily, so Erp could roll away and fire away again, while also keeping an eye on the monster's master, and the floating mist that had appeared behind it. Tamura, 13 is disabled, but one of the heroes managed to get away, he heard the mist report. While that was happening, Aim had returned from removing Eraserhead and used her skills to engulf the monster in fire. You have got to be kidding me. If you weren't our escape plan, I'd turn you to dust myself. The leader snarled while scratching his neck. Erp narrowed his eyes at that before taking a hit that sent him spiraling. He groaned as Nama was reeling up to slam both fists down on the man. But he quickly clicked the secondary switches on the king and queen, unleashing two powerful rounds that had different effects. The queen of spades bullet was a strong custom-made hollow point round that blew through and out part of Namu's back and side. The king of hearts meanwhile was an armor-piercing bullet that cut clean through the brain of the monster. While it was still stunned, Herp loaded up something special to hopefully put an end to the fight, freeing the new special bullets into the gaping wounds he had left. He grumbles in his mind about needing the bullets though. It's not easy to make them and they are serious overkill. I only made them in response to all the quirks that make bodies denser or similar, and they're an absolute last resort. Herp thinks while dodging a few more attacks, thankful for the increased reaction speed the metal and his experience have given him. Impressive, but at the same time, it proves how far you weapons of the society will go to put others down. Tamira shouts after seeing the impacts left on Namu, and the cruelly chuckling as the monster started to regenerate. Willem though was smiling, which annoyed Tamira. Izuku, put as many rounds and cuts as you can into this beast. I am you too, the assault instructor ordered before unloading, and then stabbing the side of the creature with the Jack of Diamonds. On it, I am said before pulling some steel fans out of her outfit, rushing in and slashing, burning the beast. The green team meanwhile stuck to attacking from a distance, especially because hysteria mode was wearing off. Oh crap, still feels weird to come down from, he thought before taking his next few shots. Not as fast or quite as accurate as when he's an HM, but enough to do damage to the monster. Damage that it quickly regenerates from. Is there really a point to this sensei? I am asks after getting smacked into a building. Herp narrowed his eyes on the monster before them, and he saw what he was waiting for. Just a few more shots and cuts. It'll be stopped before long. You fool, Nama was created to kill All Might. Why do a group of, I'm not even sure who or what you are, but what could you hope to do? Tamira yells while Namu takes more attacks, and dishes more out, including knocking Herb through a wall and catching Aim by the throat, slamming her into the ground before winding up to attack again. Before it does though, Izuku runs in and uses his karambit knife to hook into the shoulder of Monster, slicing it before drawing his kukri and slicing into the hand that held Aim. As she fell, Izuku shoved both blades into Namu's chest, cutting as deep as he could before catching her. Aim coughed a little as Izuku asked if she was okay. I am. You saved me again Izuku, Aim said with some tears in her eyes. Her worry increased though as she saw the monster recovering. Certain they might die, she chose to take her moment, grabbing Izuku's tie and pulling him down for a kiss. Aside from helping to affirm her feelings, it had the added effect of sending Izuku into hysteria mode again. HM Izuku gently took her hand before saying, Don't worry I am. I'm not letting anything happen to you, especially when I'm sure we can win. Drawing his gun and impacting the hilts of the blade still stuck in Namu's side, causing more cuts and internal damage. It roared in pain while the teens got away and then groaned more as William had recovered and blasted away with his guns into the back of the beast. Just as it was turning to attack him again, the man smiled, one mirrored by his student as he shot the monster as well, and it culminated with the punch Namu threw Erp's way being cut short, by the monster's hand rotting off its body. What? How? Tamura roared in panicked anger. Erp smirked before saying, Bet you didn't know that regeneration quirks came with issues. Namely, they run through telomers and telomeres, especially if you make them run into overdrive. As he was saying that that, more of Namu's body was breaking down. Some of it liquefying, other parts seemed to form into tumors and breaking down. The current top of assault reached into a pocket of his coat and pulled out one of the bullets he'd made just for fighting certain individuals with quirks. Bullets laced with a strain of trigger. As the monster collapsed and was becoming less of a threat, Tamura was freaking out and raging. 
ranting about how he'd kill them all, destroy everyone there and kill all might to make the world suffer and burn, which made the beauty narrow his eyes. Is that all? Is that your whole reason for existing? For something so petty and pathetic as that? He asked in a very cold tone, with all the peace and justice providers looking at the young man with contempt. Obviously, I hate everything and I want to break it all, and I'll be sure to start with you. Tamura shouted before rushing at the man, his hand stretched out to use his quirk, only for him and Erp to be shocked by the quick report of Tain Hagi, and a finger on each of Tamira's hands was cut off. When it caught up with the villain on what happened, he started screaming, while William turned back to see Izuku with his gun in hand. Despite being in hysteria mode, the older Bude could see the panic and fear in Izuku's eyes. Ayan takes Izuku and pulls him back for the moment while Tamura is still shouting expletives. Herb takes a breath before pulling a comm unit out of his jacket. All Bude observing or entering the UAUSJ building. This is William Wyatt Herb, our rank officer and master of new Bude high calling this in. All weapons and skills free. Deal with the criminals as needed and as you see fit, he said before taking a breath and reloading his weapons. When one villain tried to sneak attack him, their face quickly met with the business end of a bullet. And when a few others tried to jump him, Herp pulled out his ace of clubs and sent them on a one-way trip into the upper atmosphere. While he was doing that, a number of other Bude teachers and other members of NBH quickly made their way in and hurried to each of the zones where villains were attacking. Within the mountain section, one villain was holding a student hostage. I'd rather not kill someone with a similar quirk to my own. So how about you two ladies surrender? The skull masked electricity user said. He held the electrification user, Kaminari Denki, by his throat. Facing off with Yeirazu Momo and Jairo Kayoka, who were unsure on what to do next. Well now, this is an interesting and dramatic scene you've got playing out. Too bad, they all hear around them. Then a sudden flash of red, gray, and blue lights passes by their eyes. It is all for nothing. Now that the master has given the go-ahead, the new arrival says. She is a bit shorter, roughly Gyro's height, but even from a distance she seems to project a larger presence. Her pink, red hair stood out and contrasted with her green-blue eyes. And with her smirk, she had a little fang showing in the side of her mouth. Gyro shook out of the shock first before asking who she was. And didn't you notice he has a hostage? The woman introduced herself as Mammy Ashori. As for the hostage, well, I think that guy has to deal with a different problem. Am I right? Shiori said before holding up her left hand one that had a heart within it. The villain who was holding Kaminari dropped to his knees as he dropped the teen, reaching out with his last few seconds towards the missing organ. The teens who were still coherent were shocked and somewhat appalled by how nonchalant the woman in her grey combat gear was towards the life she had taken. You kids should get down. More trouble incoming, she said before drawing two pistols and taking shots at a few villains who were waking up or sneaking around to get an attack in. She disabled most of them with more non-lethal shots, but she was still ruthless. In other parts of the USJ, more Bude were stepping in and aiding where they thought they needed to. Not to say they had to rescue all of the teenagers. The half-cold, half-hot user in the landslide zone had quickly dealt with the handful of thugs there. So the Bude there had nothing to worry about. Same for the group in the ruins as the duo of Bakugo and Kirishima Ijiro had their matter mostly dealt with. Though Bakugo needed to be knocked down and around a little bit when he leapt to attack Fuma and was quickly dealt a disorienting blow to the face by his stretchy punch, and then his ribs, and arms, and legs, and finally double smashing both the front and back of Bakugo's pelvis with his fists. I swear, quirks just seem to make more and more idiotic. Or maybe it's just his personality. You don't look ready to attack at the first sign of trouble, the somewhat larger man says to Kirishima, who had his arms hardened but wasn't about to just rush the ninja. He gulped before asking who he was and getting his answer. We were tasked with stepping in if needed by the lead Bude here. But it's clear you didn't need it, Fuma said before picking up the unconscious Bekugo. So, uh, does your quirk give you stretchy arms or something, sir? Kirishima asked as they made their way out of the building. Fuma laughed before saying, no, don't have a quirk. It's just the result as he was speaking a different villain tried to attack from a corner. The ninja master breathed deep before throwing a powerful punch that stretched out and sent the man through a wall. That's just the result of a lot of training, he said while rolling his shoulder a little. Kirishima's jaw was on the ground after hearing and seeing that before following the man further and passed through a few other villains. Suzuri meanwhile cut some of the flames to the conflagration zone before putting some of his special blended tobacco into the remaining flames, catching the tailed teen Ajiro Mashiro to keep him safe from the smoke as the villains started hallucinating and attacking one another. Who is this guy? A young man thought while being escorted out of the zone. A number of Bude who had hidden or similar came out to help the hero students deal with the various villains that had infiltrated the building. And back in the center, Izuku and Aim were stunned by the true rank drop that Erp had just left. He started marching toward Tamira, intending to either bring him in or finish the villain off. But the misty villain Kurajiri refused to let that happen, and he quickly warped the young man away into safety. Damn, William shouted before drawing the peacemaker and taking a few shots into the misty void, growling in anger at the leader having gotten away. Wait, you said leader, as in you don't think he's the actual boss do you sir? Izuku asked while taking out a few other villains that had started to come out of the woodwork. No, I'd be willing to bet he's just a puppet. 
for someone far, far more dangerous. Herb said between shots fired around himself, and suddenly, new shots rang out through the building. The hero teachers had arrived and helped to finish up the mopping up operation, lead by someone who Izuku was slightly fanboying over, All Might. I must thank you but I do have to say we can't tolerate vigilantes. You'll have to come with us, the big hero said with a bow before stepping forward to ask the teens to come with him. Herp noticed a something important though, something that reminded him of a long time ago. He told All Might to calm down before saying, it has been a very long time Toshinori, almost 50 years. Hearing his true name stunned not just the number one hero, but the various other heroes and a few officers that were arriving on the scene. All Might jerkily turned toward Herp and asked, how? How do you know my given name? Huh, that's easy son. Your parents told me, back a little after you were born. They were both excellent students of mine, Herp said with a smile, reminiscing on two students of his who graduated from NBH, one, an armed prosecutor who would argue his way through most trouble, the other, a capable combat beauty with exceptional hand-to-hand -hand skills. How they had found their way to the school often got into arguments over which method was better, and it eventually led them closer together, till a little guy with blonde hair as bright as his mother's was born, but the jaw that was quite a bit like his father's as he grew. A tear fell from Earp's eye he remembered them, while All Might was processing that there was someone who not only knew his parents but was their teacher. Um, no offense sir, but you seem far too young for that. Do you have a quirk that slows your aging? William rolls his eyes before saying they could go over it later. This is actually approved and authorized. We may not show ourselves often, but these still hold weight, the man says before bringing out his badge for the officers to scan. Izuku and I am do the same with a few of the others who had arrived with the various other students, and when they saw the data and answers back on the status of the license holders, well a number of them looked like they had shit themselves, and the rest quickly snapped to attention and started calling all of them sir or ma'am. The heroes looked around in shock before asking who they were. As I said in my authorizing of the other agents, I'm one of the masters of New Beauty High, as well as the assault instructor there. Izuku's slightly face faulted before noting Earp's true rank in the Beauty system. Sir, you are in our rank. That basically puts you on par with a country's entire military force. Okay, technically a small country but still. You are a literal one-man army with the authorization almost on par with a president or prime minister. Everyone looked to the man with varying degrees of shock, and he in turn just groaned before reaching into the pocket of his trench coat for a flask. Though he didn't drink from it, just smelling the booze before putting the flask back. You're killing me, kid. How about we reconvene elsewhere to answer a number of questions? I agree. I must say you all have me quite curious. I didn't even know something like your group existed. This seems like a very, very well-kept secret. I'll forgive my rudeness. I am Nezu, a principal of UA, the rodent-like hero said with a bow. Erp nodded before gesturing to the rest to leave the procedures to the police. Time for a powwow of our two schools. No POV. After the various villains had been loaded up and taken by the police in Butte, it was time to discuss a number of matters. The rest of you head back. Izuku, you, I am, and I guess Juki can stick around. You look a little upset though. Well yeah, I snuck into that USJ place, was all set to back up the hero kids, and this split-haired nut almost freezes me. Juki shouts before asking Izuku to see the knives she made, noting they needed some maintenance after the fight with Namu. Before she could though, a villain breaks loose and charges at her. Juki quickly drew her .410 and blasted the slightly beast of a man in the chest with impact rounds, and then punched him in the stomach so hard he was vomiting for a minute giving the officers plenty of time to re-restrain him. Erp chuckled before asking Nezu if there was a good place they could talk things over. Of course officer, or agent, whichever sir. There are a few things I would like to know, especially if you are an educator like the rest here. Nezu said with an intrigued eye at Izuku and the other Bute students. The rest of the teens though were shocked by some of what they'd seen the Bute do already. But someone else was having a different kind of shock he was going through. Deku's with that. Whatever boss and two hot girls. What the hell has happened in the last few years? Bakugo thought after waking up from being knocked out by Fuma, who had quickly disappeared in the blink of an eye, as had the rest of the beauty after Erp gave the word. All Might meanwhile was looking at Erp with some confusion and a little trepidation. After all, this man could have some stories to tell about his parents. Before I, before villains took them from me, the hero thinks before offering to set up a room back at UA. As he leaps off, Izuku is still in awe of the man who had been his hero for most of his life. Something I am elbowed him about so they could get on the buses back to UA. I must thank you for your help, but who are you all? Oh and my name is Ida Tenya, the armored student who had escaped earlier said with a chopping salute. Juki clears her throat and mentioned that they were similar to the hero students and different at the same time. For one thing, we've actually got full authorization to act however we need to as Bute. At least once we've finished basic training. So wait, does that mean you guys have fought villains before? Kirishima asked with an excited look toward the teens. Some of us didn't have much of a choice in that regard. If you remember the reports from a few years ago, Izuku said while looking down at his hand. A hand Ayan grabbed as they both remembered how they met Erp. The others meanwhile were shocked and Ida rapidly bowed and apologized for what they had endured. 
but that still doesn't explain who you are, the dark-haired girl in a red suit, Kodai Yui said before introducing herself. Ayan clears her throat before admitting that Herb sensei would be explaining soon enough, so it would be kind of redundant to explain everything. And sure enough, he did do just that by detailing the profession of Bude and how old of a profession it was, though he had been hoping that the teens would fill them and so he didn't have to explain everything. While most of the teens and heroes were surprised, a few saw the schools in a different light. I suppose you could say, you are the precursors to our hero schools. Would there be a stretch, sir? Ida said with a raise of his hand. Herb shrugged and admitted it wasn't too far off. In fact, the handful of Bude who were still operating at the time everything went to shit thanks to Quirks, helped the heroes who would inspire the Rhode Island statute. Something, I had a little bit of a hand in. Jaws dropped upon hearing that and looked at the man like he was crazy or lying. That would make you almost 150 years old. The short purple teen mind to minor who shouted in shock. Herb shrugged and said, Hey, roughly, I was born a few years before quirks were unleashed on the world, so I didn't get stuck with that disease or abnormality. Shock struck all of them once again before Herb realized what he'd said. You need to work on your public speaking skills, sensei. You just spilled a major secret after all, Hizuku said with a small chuckle. I am and Juki both snickered at the old beauty's loose lips while the man was forced to explain the real root of quirks. And to say all of them were disgusted or appalled, or angry about what was the start of their powers would be putting it mildly. To think, we only exist like this because of a monster. Does that mean we'll all become monsters like him? A tentacled Mizo Shoji asked while thinking back on all those who hurt him and the reason for it. William sighed and admitted he wasn't sure. It could be that, given enough time and focus on developing quirks and making stronger ones, you'll all just turn into rampaging beasts. Every one of you, or your grandchildren will just monsters that need to be put down. That's a little too dark, don't you think? I am said with an adjustment of her glasses. All Might gulps at this matter before trying to change the subject by asking about how Erp was still alive. The gunman lets out a breath before taking off his duster coat. He then starts unbuttoning his shirt which causes a number of the teens to freak out and some of the girls cover their eyes. Hey, as, well, as attractive as you might be with your shirt off, we don't need to see. The R-rated hero Midnight said before trailing off. Because she and everyone else saw all of the scarring that made up William's back. I've seen real monsters born of quirks. Namely, those of the so-called Meta Liberation Army. They attacked the school while I was teaching there. Killed dozens of my students and friends. And left me with a back broken in so many places I should be dead 100 times over. Recovery girl dropped her cane before asking to look at the man's back a bit closer and was horrified by the sheer number of scars he had. From surgery scars to various others, she wasn't certain how the man could move at all. And that's not even accounting for ones on your right arm. Herp grabbed his shirt and started to put it on while explaining some of the surgery the U.S. government had done to keep him active and alive. Most of my spinal column has been replaced by a certain type of metal. Back in the day, we knew it as a type of metal that could grant powers to the wielders. It was the stuff of the gods, and only those worthy could use their powers. But my government found some workarounds to that. He moved his right hand around a little and noted that they had collected enough of the various types of hurricane and studied it to where they could use it to give Erp the ability to walk and fight again but not without a number of side effects. Least of which is that once a year, I have to have a follow-up surgery by one of our best from Medica to stabilize me to keep away the near-constant pain I should be in. But the worst, honestly, is that thanks to all the metals, my aging has completely halted. In fact, I think I might be physically younger than when I had the operation. Not aging backwards, but I'm forever stuck at 30 years old or so. Jaws dropped at that and then a number of students started pouring in question after question about what other abilities he had thanks to the metal. And could we use them if we got that stuff? Hiroshima asked while considering the possibility of new powers to complement his quirk. Herp shook his head and admitted it was rare in the current era. Even the user's reverse hurricane is in limited supply. And it's a crafted type. Lets me shut down godlike beings with a touch or completely cancel out other hurricanes. But it doesn't do anything to mine, he said with a shrug. Nezu hung's before admitting that was quite similar to Eraserhead and his function as a member of the faculty. Let alone being one of the best hero students UA has produced, the bear rat man said with a smile. All Might though was now more curious about his parents and their stories. But William said that would wait for another day. I don't know about anyone else, but I've had a long day. Maybe we could pick this up later. When you can relax a little yourself Toshi-kun. Herp said with a raised eyebrow and a wink. While most had a chuckle at the way the beauty referred to the number one hero, he was instead shocked by how William had phrased that. Does he know about my time limit? He thought before readying to leave with the teens. Um, excuse me, sir. If you'd allow it, I'd like you to stay a few days. No offense, but you are now a likely target of the League of Villains. And while I don't doubt your skills, it would be foolish to let you out of our sight. Nezu explains before offering to let the group stay at UA for the night. And although Erp would prefer to go back home to the NBH, the look on Izuku, Juki, and even Iam's eyes told him that they wanted to stay as well. 
if only to explore more of the campus and see some of the things the top hero school does with its students. Juki herself asking to see the development lab for new gear ideas. William face bombs before agreeing to stay, if only to keep the kids safer. Though he understood the bigger reason a little later. So, he asked us to stay so I could talk with you. Hey Tashinori, the man said before looking back to the door of the lounge. Standing there was All Might all buffed up in his usual smile. He coughed once before saying, indeed. I was hoping to talk with you more about a number of things, such as how you beauty operate and... Herb holds a hand up to interrupt the hero and says, Drop the act, kid. I know all about your last big fight with that monster. And I also know you didn't get the job done. So how about you relax a little and we can talk about what you really want to know. All Might seems like he wants to refute the r rank suspicions and accusations, but instead he lets out a breath and shrinks down to his true form. How long have you known? He asked with a conflicted look in his sunken eyes. Since around the time you met Shamira Nana. I was about to pick you up myself and offer to take you to New Beauty High, Erp says with a little smile. The hero's eyes went wide before thinking about what his story could have been like if Erp found him first. So why didn't you? He asked with a slight gulp. William pulled out his flask again and looked ready to take a drink. But he stopped short and just smelled the liquor inside before putting it back. You went to her of your own volition. You wanted a chance to be a hero like her, even if it was slim to none on chances. I heard how you wanted to be a symbol that could make people feel more secure and happy in their daily lives rather than live in the constant fear and evil that was normal thanks to quirks. And I knew you couldn't do that as a beauty. We've taken to being secretive after all. You wouldn't be the symbol everyone needed. Tashinori's eyes were wide hearing that and he quietly thanked him for giving him that choice and chance. But, I really do want to hear more about my parents. What you knew before. They died. All Might says while looking down sadly. Erp gives him a small smile before patting the couch he was sitting on before regaling him with a few stories from NBH, and his time teaching Yagi Tashi, an exceptional armed lawyer and prosecutor, and Noriko Smith, one of the best fighters in his assault classes. The number one hero's eyes were wide and shining, as was his smile as he heard the tales of their various missions, investigating rogue politicians, disabling and leaving some villains for the police, and orating well enough to save an innocent man who had been set up by a dirty quirk-loving judge. Huh, she never showed me anything like that, but I guess I knew about the way my mom liked to fight anyway. She loved to punch things too, All Might said while wiping tears away from his eyes. The beauty teacher smiled and acknowledged the accuracy. I'm just sorry I couldn't help you when you fought. Him, Erp says with a sigh, remembering the worst villain in the world, and how he had made life difficult for so many beauty, let alone taking many of their lives. Maybe I wouldn't have been hurt if you had been there. Or maybe you would have died too. It's hard to say sir, but thank you. For so many things, All Might says as the tears keep flowing as he thinks back on his parents. All the while, the various other teachers had been listening in and crying a bit themselves upon hearing the tales and the hero tearing up as well. While Erp was bringing All Might to tears with stories, some others were tearing up in various ways by seeing Izuku and his few teammates. The various perverts were crying tears of blood at seeing how close I am and her large breasts were up against him. Or about the fact that Juki was looking at the pair with some reserved jealousy. Like she wanted to be where I am was. But another was wanting to fight Izuku and bring him to tears. And that was Bekugo. What the hell were you doing there Deku? He shouted upon finding the trio. Izuku groans before saying, What do you think I was doing? Saving all your butts. At least as well as I could. I am gripped Izuku's hand tightly before asking if he had any real business with them. Or are you just jealous of Izuku being able to take on a monster that was meant to kill All Might? And we won while you would have lost. That incised Bakugo and he leapt in to attack Ayam. It wasn't Izuku who stepped in though. Ayam did it for herself and smashed his face in with her knee. And while he was still disoriented, she got quickly behind him, holding her fingers in the typical ninja pose, before leaping and tucking her body tightly. Shuranui Ruaugi Kuzuno Ayam. She calls out while spinning and producing purple flames to roast Bakugo. And to end the finisher, she faces Bakugo again and traps him in a whirling ring of flames to burn and knock him around even more. That's new. When did you come up with that one? Juki asked with a raised eyebrow. Ayam takes a moment to catch her breath and admitted it was just her own spin on a family technique. I'm not warmed up though, that was hard to pull off, she said as they walked away and left the slightly burning Bakugo to stew in his arrogance and failure. The other teens though were unsure of how to approach the trio, so the invisible girl Hagikir Toru just ripped off the bandage. Hi, look uh, we're not all like him. Most of us are just curious about you guys. So, do you want to just hang out for a bit? She said after introducing herself. Ida steps forward next along with Yuraka Achako and Kirishima. I'd like to know more about the history of the heroes who preceded us, as well as you new heroes yourself. Ida explained. Kirishima and another guy, Rikido Sato, wanted to talk a bit with Juki. Namely, I'd kinda like to test my strength against yours dude. Kirishima said, not realizing that Juki was a girl. Though he did apologize and compliment her after he was beaten in an arm wrestling match. Same for Sato. You don't have a quirk, you're just naturally a lot stronger, eh? Wonder what that says about us, Sato said while massaging his arm after losing. Kind of yeah, might be due to lineage. I am descended from John Henry after all, though I hope I don't need to go out like he did. 
Anyway, could one of you show me the development studio? Juki said before Jairo stepped up to offer and show her the way, tying Juki's arm up with a little gulp. And while they were headed that way, Toru and the pink and horned girl Ashido Mina decided to bombard Izuku and Ayin with questions, mostly pertaining to their relationship, as they had noticed how close the pair were, and hugged them after hearing what had happened before Erp found them. The teens wanted to spend a bit more time together, but Yue was closing for the day and Nezu had let the beauty stay in the nurse's office so they could get some sleep after the stressful day. However, Erp had something different he wanted to talk with Nezu about. You suspect something, don't you? Namely, that there is a traitor in the school who told the LOV about the training exercise. Right? We had similar intel before going to the USJ, he explained with a serious expression. Nezu looked at the man before gently nodding and saying, Indeed. I do suspect someone, but I'm unsure on how to proceed. Just waiting for their next suspicious act or incident involving the students. That's a risk I'd prefer not to take. So, would you be willing to investigate? I could put in a request at your school, yes. Erp nodded slightly before saying, I think a two-pronged investigation might be prudent. Namely, what do you say to something special? Something I could get approved since I'm one of the masters of NBH. Nezu raised an eyebrow at that and asked if Erp would join him for a cup of tea to discuss matters. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku was a secret hero. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Han Baron for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to